July in Arizona, nice and cool inside Chase Field, where this 10-game D-backs homestand continues with a special pitching matchup on this Wednesday night. Marlins ace Jose Fernandez, just his fourth start after Tommy John surgery. He faces rising D-backs lefty Robbie Ray. Good pitching matchup for you. This one should be fun. It's the Diamondbacks and the Marlins right here on Fox Sports Arizona. And good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve with you, Bob Brenly along the way. Uh, this one is going to be fun. Bob, the Diamondbacks getting a look front and center at Jose Fernandez, one of the best young pitchers in baseball. Yeah, as he takes the mound tonight, only 22 years old. He doesn't turn 23 till next week. Only his 40th major league start, but widely recognized as one of the most dominant pitchers in the game when he's on top of his game. And that game includes a fastball that approaches 100 miles an hour. Nasty curveball, a really good straight changeup, and... He's pitching to more contact this year, so uh, all the pieces are there for Jose Fernandez. And he can hit a little bit as well in his first game back from Tommy John. He actually homered off the Giants' Matt Kane For the Diamondbacks, it's the lefty Robbie Ray. And Robbie Ray really just needs to continue doing what he's been doing. He's been on a nice roll. He's only walked three batters in his last four starts. That's always a key for Robbie. If anything, maybe be a little more efficient with his pitches. Threw 99 in five innings last time out. Well, a terrific pitching matchup here for you tonight, Jose. Jose Fernandez for the Marlins and Robbie Ray for the Diamondbacks. There they are getting ready for their start here tonight in the rubber game of this three-game series. Well, the mystery is solved about tomorrow night in the opener against the Brewers. The Diamondbacks today named a starter for tomorrow night's game, and it's a young man who'll be making his major league debut tomorrow night. Details on that coming up. to you in part by Oregano's Pizza Bistro, your neighborhood pizza joint. We are athletic supporters by Card Power from Arizona Federal Credit Union. Now that's the power of us. 
by Arizona Tire Pros. For the best selection of Continental and General Brand tires, visit your local Arizona Tire Pros location today. And by Hayward Pool Products for crystal clear pool water. Choose the world's best-selling salt chlorination system, AquaRick. Welcome back to Chase Field. I'm Kate Longworth getting you ready for this season finale between the Marlins and Diamondbacks. And with this series up for grabs, it's shaping up to be quite the pitching duel, we're thinking, here at Chase Field tonight as the Marlins give the nod to Jose Fernandez and the Diamondbacks look to Robbie Ray to finish things off. But Diamondbacks also looking ahead to the next series as they announce that Zach Godley will get the nod tomorrow against the Brewers. He will be making his major league debut, and the Diamondbacks have high expectations. We felt like this guy has kind of epitomized what uh, we're trying to get uh, through as an organization. He's a big competitor, and the way he pitches is uh, kind of the way what we're looking for. He was a reliever when we traded for him from the Cubs, so he's being built up as a starter. Um, so there is an issue whether you know how many times he can start from here till. Uh, October, you know what I mean? So we have to be careful with that. That would be the only thing of, I think definitely he'll get this start and then his next one, and we'll see where we are. Godley was acquired from Chicago back in December of 2014, and in 17 games between single and double A, the right-hander posted a 9-4 record with a 2.72 ERA. Now, Chip Hale was a little secretive when it came to talking specifically about his minor league all-star stuff. After all, he's kind of a secret weapon, and he wants to keep the Brewers guessing tomorrow. But Chip saying he has all the confidence, and uh, Brewers probably going through the video right now, but Chip and the D-backs are ready ready for this but first they are ready for this series finale with the Marlins Diamondbacks going up trying to take this series we'll see how it all plays out we're coming up with you and first pitch on the other side and a special pitching matchup in store for you tonight. This will be fun. The D-backs send Robbie Ray out to the mound to face Marlins ace Jose Fernandez. After the Diamondbacks won the opener on Monday, Miami a winner last night. And on the mound for the D-backs is your Arizona Ford starting pitcher, Robbie Ray. 23-year-old left-hander. He has been very good since his second call-up from Reno during the first week of June. His manager is Chip Hale. He's turned into our most consistent pitcher. I mean strikeouts and 
Uh, his ERA is fantastic. His record isn't isn't what we would want it to be, but that's not really his fault. We haven't scored enough runs for him. But uh, he's definitely outperformed what we thought out of spring training. We thought you know he was going to need some time in AAA, and uh, when we brought him here, he he's pitched beautifully. He sure has. The numbers on Robbie Ray is 10th start, an outstanding 2-2-9 ERA, and tonight facing the Marlins for the first time in his career. You know, every year, partner, regardless of whether you're a contending team or the last place team in baseball, you're going to have some guys that don't quite reach expectations, and you're going to have others that exceed expectations. And so far, Robbie Ray has been a really pleasant surprise. Two and one on the Marlins leadoff man, Ichiro Suzuki, 260 and a homer. Vic Carapaza. Our plate umpire tonight that's in the seats and it's even two and two. Each row 0 for 5 last night that snapped a seven game hitting streak. He is one for eight in the series. And Robbie Ray strikes him out to open up the ball game. Good start for the Diamondbacks. This is the lineup for Dan Jennings Miami Marlins. So Ichiro goes down on strikes to start this ball game. He'll be out in right field. Martin Prado at third base today. Christian Yelich in left. Second Actually, Martin Prado at second. Martin Christian Yelich in left. Casey McGee at third base. Michael Morse over at first this afternoon. JT Real Muto behind the plate. Cole Gillespie in center field. Adani Echeverria at shortstop. And Jose Fernandez, the flamethrower on the mound. Yeah, you have Prado at second and McGee at third. Here is Martin Prado, the former Diamondback. And he looks at strike one. Prado 275 and four home runs. And you may notice behind the plate, the second major league start for rookie Oscar Hernandez, who is the catcher for Robbie Ray. Wellington Castillo came up with some calf tightness very late this afternoon, so just before the ball game, a lineup change for Chip Hale, and the rookie Hernandez is behind the plate. Right to Chris Owings. Two up, two down. This is the defense around the Diamondback left hander, our mid first bank starting defense. David Peralta will be in left field tonight. Ender in Ciarte moves over to center. Yasmani Tomas back in the lineup in right field. Jake Lamb and Cliff Pennington on the left side of the infield tonight. Chris Owings and Paul Goldschmidt on the right side. Oscar Hernandez behind the plate for left hander Robbie Ray. And I should correct myself on Castillo. It's tightness in the left hamstring. And so he was a late scratch from the starting lineup tonight. He took extra hitting all afternoon, though, but came up limping, so Oscar's back there. Here's Christian Yelich, 270 and five home runs. And he has had a pair of hits in each of the first two games in this series, and he's now got a seven game hitting streak. Well, Marlins have hit a couple of home runs in this series, but Yelich has been by far their best offensive player. And it's been that way for a while, hitting better than 400 over his last 19 games. 96 elevated from Robbie Ray. He's ahead one and two. You know, thinking of Oscar Hernandez uh, being called into late duty to catch Robbie Ray tonight, uh, and this is not taking anything away from Robbie Ray, but he should be a little bit easier to catch than some of the other guys on the staff because he's all fastball. Lots of fastballs, yeah. You know, he doesn't really have a trick pitch. He doesn't bounce a lot of balls in the dirt. You know, really, uh, as you see, the arsenal for Robbie Ray, lots and lots of fastballs, both the four-seamer and the two-seamer. And really, the issue with Oscar in his first start behind the plate for Chase Anderson wasn't physical. It was calling pitches. With Pennington in there at shortstop and Robbie Ray, a strikeout, two ground ball outs, a 13-pitch first, and we are underway from downtown Phoenix, Arizona.
Cuban-born right-hander Jose Fernandez. Just his fourth big league start since Tommy John surgery. One of the most exciting pitchers in the game. Here's Mark Grace. When he's got his A stuff, you better beat him one to nothing. We're hoping he has his, you know, we, we're hoping he has his C or D stuff and we might get two or three runs. You know, that's the, that's how good he is. So we have to have a really good outing from Robbie Ray, and we've got to we got to compete against this guy. This guy is a great competitor. He's young. He's um, he's he's feeling good about himself right now, and he should. You know, I'd feel good about myself if I was uh, if I had the stuff he has. And there in Ciarte looks at strike one. The number is a small sample size following the Tommy John surgery. He has looked like his old self. He's won twice, a 2 3 7 ERA, and so far 21 strikeouts against only one walk. Yeah, command hasn't been an issue in his return from Tommy John surgery, at least not so far. And I mentioned it before explosive fastball that will approach 100 miles per hour. I got the curveball right there at 83 has a real good straight changeup that he's using as a ground ball pitch this year getting a lot more ground ball outs in his first three starts than he has at any time in his career. And he's a big sturdy guy out there 6 2 2 15. One and two on Ender in Ciarte back in the leadoff spot tonight. And Fernandez starts out with a strikeout. The lineup for Chip Hales Diamondbacks tonight. Ciarte at the top out in center field. Chris Owens moves up in the two hole playing second base. Paul Goldschmidt always a threat in the first inning of the ball game. He'll be at first base. David Peralta in left. Yasmani Tomas in right. Jake Lamb at third. Cliff Pennington at shortstop. Oscar Hernandez will be behind the plate for left hander Robbie Ray. Firing strikes in there at 97. Owings 232 and three home runs. First got the start in the two hole last night. Went 0 for 4 with a pair of strikeouts. That one at 98 is in there, and he's quickly down 0 and 2. <laughs> 99, 97, 98, 99. Three pitches, three strikes. First baseman number 44, Paul Coachman. Looking too tricky there. There it is. See if you can hit it. Most guys can't. A chance for Goldie now. Three fastballs, all of them right around the edges of the strike zone. Nothing in the middle of the plate. Another Marlins pitcher out there who loses his footing. 341 batting average for Goldie leads the National League. No major league player has more RBIs or bases on balls than Paul Goldschmidt. And it's one and one. Slider. Curveball slider. He's kind of shied away from the slider a little bit coming off the Tommy John. Working quickly out there, too. And sure enough, Goldie finds that 5 5 hole and rolls it into left for a two out single. In the last four days, Goldie has hit a double on Sunday in the first inning. He walked on Monday in the first inning, a single last night, and now a single here tonight. Just by McGee and just by Echeverria. Well, if he wasn't so good as a three hitter, Goldie would make an outstanding leadoff man. <laughs> Well, the cleanup man tonight is David Peralta. 274 and nine home runs. He has a pair of hits and RBIs in the series, and there's ball one. Really good story by Sports Illustrated's Ben Reader on David Peralta that uh, came out in the online edition of SI Today at SI.com. So check that out. His whole background about his remarkable journey to the major leagues. A high fly ball to center for Gillespie. And Fernandez strands the two out single. No score at Chase Field.
eight is enough. Hmm. Over the D backs last eight games, they've hit 228 and average two and a half runs per game. In the eight games before that, they were hitting 305 as a club, averaging over five runs per game. Hopefully, we're starting another eight game streak here in the right direction. And for Robbie Ray, I mentioned it in the open make every pitch count. Was very effective last time out, but it took him 99 pitches to get through five innings. Casey McGee leads off the second. There's another strike from Robbie. McGee, the former Marlin, then Giant, now a Marlin again, batting 214 on the year. Right, you went Dick Van Patten on the, on the keys to the game. <laughs> well, the number eight was just jumping off the stat sheet there. Eight is enough. Just missed at 95. A lot of fastballs in this ball game and a lot of pitches 95 plus from both starters. Both guys working very quickly too. There's no messing around out there. They get it and throw it. And Robbie's behind now three and one. Ball, but you don't want to put yourself in too many predictable counts against good big league hitters. Casey McGee started a little early there to make sure he get the barrel on that fastball and drives it out there just to the right of straightaway center field. You can see how much Oscar Hernandez had to move that glove up as Robbie Ray left it up and McGee drilled it at 99 miles an hour off the bat. And here's big Michael Morse who homered last night 211 and now four home runs. A homer last night off Jeremy Hellickson to lead off the seventh inning, and that's his only hit of the series so far. Ball one. Not getting on Vic Carapazza behind the plate. Not yet. <laughs> but that uh, 2 1 pitch should have been a strike. Count should have been 2 2 instead of 3 and 1 to Casey McGee. Now those are the little things where one pitch makes so much difference in a ball game. Hey, I mean, you might go a week of games where they're, you know, the umpire will miss a call here or there, and it doesn't really affect the game or doesn't really affect a lot of at bats, but occasionally it'll swing an at bat in the hitter's favor at absolutely the wrong time. Well, I got news about balls and strikes. We'll save it for a little bit, but I, I got news that you may break down and cry. You'll be so happy to hear this. <laughs> There is some major umpire strike zone news coming. So I save it for an inning or two and give you a moment to prepare yourself emotionally. Wow, yeah. tension. You, this, you may weep on the air. Be so happy. One and one. I'm ready to start crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, they look back, but uh, they got those two middle infielders wide of the bag at second, so no one to throw it to. One one pitch. This is upstairs. Got to be careful to Morse. Keep the ball down because as we found out last night, Jeremy Hellickson left a pitch up and Morse just hammered it. Yeah, pitch up and out over the plate. A little bit tardy with his swing, but unfortunately that put the barrel of the bat right on the ball that time. Line drive home run into right field. Robbie was all strikes in the first inning, but he has, has struggled with his command here in the second. And he's fallen behind again, three and one. Well, these hitters counts, just the quality of swing. I mean, a batter can be much more aggressive. You can be much more predictive as a hitter in a three-one count as opposed to a two-two. I mean, you can be pretty sure if this one's close to the zone, Michael Morse is going to take a power swing at this one. He's gone three and one to the first two batters of this inning after working a one, two, three first. That's in the seats. Stay, stay, stay. 
Mike Morris got off to a real slow start in Miami, and then as he often does, he got hurt, missed about six weeks with a bum finger. Lemonade, lemonade, like grandma made. Yum, yum, gotta get some. <laughs> Who is thirsty? That doesn't move some lemonade. Well, I don't know what does. does. Three two pitch. That's the kind of effort you look for from your players. <laughs> well, it, you know, he's just lost the touch here after a tremendous, very efficient first inning, a strikeout and two ground balls, and now Robbie Ray is really struggling to throw strikes. A double and a walk to lead off the inning. Fans have heard me say this before. Occasionally, a pitcher will get scared off of a pitch. I don't think that's necessarily the case with Robbie Ray here, but he did give up a blast on a 3 1 pitch to Casey McGee. He fell behind Moore's 3 and 1, threw him a slider for a foul ball, and then missed with a slider on the full count pitch. 11 pitches in this inning so far, seven balls, and he's yet to record an out. And here's the catcher, JT Real Muta. McGee, the runner at second, Morse at first. And again, he's behind. 1 0, Real Muto, 252 and five home runs. A double and a single last night. I like the location. Yeah. He might have nipped the bottom of the zone right there. See, Oscar snatched that glove up. Down and away, and he fouls it off one and one. Well, fortunately for the D backs and Robbie Ray, he's been at his best in these situations. Opponents hitting only 167 against him with runners in scoring position. And that's a pretty good sample size. Seven for 42. Getting to that point, yeah. One one pitch. Here at Potts of Grant's time. Robbie Ray in his last start Friday against the Giants. Two runs in five innings. He did not walk a batter, had excellent command in that ball game. And had a career high, eight strikeouts. Seventy-two of his ninety-nine pitches in that last start went for strikes. He has not been as sharp so far here tonight. That's in the seats. And it's one and two. And Robbie said he's getting a little more comfortable being less reliant on that fastball. It's still mostly fastball, as we showed you earlier. A little over 70% of the time, but he says he's mixed it in the slider and the changeup more. And it's working for him as long as he's keeping it down. Can't let that creep up there. He'll take anything right now as long as it's a strike. Real Muto's been on a nice run at the plate lately. He's hit safely in four straight games, 12 of his last 15. And during that span, is hitting almost 340. And momentarily lost his mind last night. Stole third base early in the ball game, and then tried to do it again later in the ball game. <laughs> got picked off second. This is drilled to center. Sierrate will play it off the home run porch. McGee will score. They'll stop Morse at third. And it's 1 0 Miami. JT Real Muto on RBI double. Come on, Christian Mack. And that just missed a home run. Well, really well struck balls in this inning. First McGee's to the right of center field and then real Muto to the left of center field fortunately hit the facing of that home run porch and stayed in play. Mike Harkey. So a run is in. 
Still nobody out in the inning, and the former D-back home, Gillespie, is the hitter. With Morris at third and Real Muto in second. Gillespie just over 330 with a home run. He is hitless in the series so far, 0 for 5. Infield creeping in for the D backs. That one's in the dirt. Gillespie last seven hitting 385. Just called up from Triple A New Orleans at the end of last month. That's in there for a strike at 92. So far, things to be seem to be going a little smoother uh, with the signs with the runner at second base. Uh, we talked about Oscar Hernandez in his first start behind the plate for Chase Anderson, and through three and two thirds, they just could not get on the same page. And Chase had a lot of runners on at second base in that game. Behind again, three balls and a strike. Yeah, so far so good as far as that's concerned. Things appear to be working smoothly out there. Face seven batters so far and throwing first pitch strikes to only three of them. My ball out to Yasmani Tomas. Horse is at third. And here he comes. The throw from Tomas is cut off. Real Muto advances and it's 2 0 Miami. RBI for Cole Gillespie. Tomas was a strong throw to the plate that time. Goldie um, apparently felt the throw was offline or they had no chance because he goes ahead and cuts it off. Yeah, it was tailing up the third baseline. They were not going to have a play at home plate, but Tomas gave it a good shot. So now with one out, Real Muto is at third, and it's the shortstop of Danny Echeverria. 280 and four home runs. That OPS keeps going up each season. As he becomes more and more of a hitter up there to go along with a tremendous glove at short. He has a pair of hits in the series, both coming last night. He drove in a run. Chavaria hits lefties very well. Better even than that guy. 1-1 one, one pitch. He does not wait around though. He's up there hacking. Look at Jose Fernandez in the on deck circle for the Marlins. He's just kind of waiting for a bus. <laughs> Leaning up against the railing in front of our camera positions down there. Now with the two strikes he'll actually uh, you know stand up. But he was just casually. Leaning against the railing like he was there waiting for the truck to go by, reading the paper. That's in the seats. You saw him go back to his own dugout there to talk to the skipper. Uh, a lot of times you can go ahead and tell the pitcher, hey, listen, if you get a base hit here, drive in the run, and Echeverry is on first base, go ahead and put down a sack bunt. No, you have a sign to your third base coach. He knows what he's doing. You don't even need to put a sign on. I've already told him what I want him to do. Here he goes again. Just kind of. Just let me know. I'll be over here. <laughs> Call strike three. Rings up Echeverria. Second strikeout for Robbie Ray. 
Well, as we mentioned, Jose Fernandez is a hitter. He made a return from Tommy John surgery three starts ago, and in his first game back, he homered off Matt Cain. This was July 2nd. That's out to the Clevelander. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a pose there at home plate after that home run. Uh, you think he might have learned his lesson after doing that against the Braves and parking a bench clear. Yeah, this one's coming back to us. Robbie already at 40 pitches, only 24 for strikes. Real Muto at third, two outs. Laboring here. Lines it out to left. Peralta is not going to get there. That's a fair ball. It's off the wall of the bullpen. Real Muto scores. And Jose Fernandez continues as a run producer. The RBI double makes it 3 0 Marlins. He apparently went back to the dugout and his manager told him, go up there and hit a double down the left field corner. Boy, nice flat swing through the zone. Catches that ball out in front. And that's on an 0 2 pitch, too. That just cannot happen. An 0 2 pitch to the pitcher with two outs. Ichiro, the leadoff man, comes around here in the second. He struck out his first time. Conference time again with Oscar Hernandez, the rookie catcher. Ichiro, 103 hits away from 3,000 in the big leagues. Marlins with three doubles and a walk in this inning. That one goes through Oscar. Fernandez is kind of hung up out there. A little indecisive, finally decided to break for third. Pulled that ball over into the right handed batter's box there. Maybe a little more movement than Oscar was anticipating. Pass ball charge to the rookie catcher. Ah. High fly ball. Very short left. Peralta coming in. He's got it. And the second inning finally ends for Robbie Ray. But the Marlins get three to take a 3 0 lead.
fans watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.tv Premium. You'll get real time highlights, live look ins, the pitch tracking widget, and a whole lot more every night, every device, the whole thing. Blackout and other restrictions do apply, so visit MLB.tv for all the details. Over 400 devices. I didn't know there were 400 devices. Mobile and connected, baby. Wow. Yeah. I'm way behind the times. Uh, you're pretty good, actually. You got the thin uh, laptop there. I see on your phone a lot. You've only got three devices, though. Come on. You're 397 short. Go to work. You can get MLB.tv on all of them. As Bonnie Tomas leads off the second, 303 and five home runs. That may have been the worst half inning of Robbie Ray's season. Yeah, it really was. Uh, I mean, you said laboring, and that's exactly the word that jumps to mind the way he was uh, just missing the strike zone, falling behind in the count, and then having to move one. Prado throws out Tomas, one away. Take a look at the Marlins defensively. Our mid first bank starting defense for Miami. Yelich, Gillespie, and Ichiro Suzuki across the outfield, left to right. McGee and Echeverria on the left side of the infield. Former D back Martin Prado at second with big Michael Morse over at first base. JT Real Muto behind the plate. And Jose Fernandez, the right hander on the mound. Jake Lamb. <laughs> 97. Just fires away one after the other. Lamb, 273 and two homers. 0 for 4 with a pair of strikeouts last night. I mean, you get up there, you get two 97 mile an hour fastballs, and 18 seconds into the at bat, you're down 0 and 2. This guy is no picnic. I mean, that's not even fair. And that's after the elbow surgery. What they put in there? <laughs> he is barely a year removed, in fact, from that Tommy John surgery, Jose Fernandez. They put a new UCL ligament in that right elbow. That was last May 16th at the Curlin Job Clinic in L.A. And in three big league starts so far following the surgery, he's won twice. He's beat the Giants and the Reds, and no decision his last time out Friday at Philadelphia. Ooh. Called strike three. Gets away from the fastball and catches Jake Lamb looking for his third strikeout. What a late break on that backdoor slider right there. I mentioned earlier that Fernandez pitching to contact a little more this year. Basically because he doesn't like to be on a pitch limit. You know, coming off the Tommy John, the Marlins are going to be very careful with him, and he, he wants to complete ball game. So in order to do that, he's trying to pitch to a little more contact this year as opposed to trying to strike everybody out. He has gone at least six full innings in all three starts this year, and he's thrown between 70 and 94 pitches so far. And he's one and one on Cliff Pennington getting the start at shortstop tonight. 243 and a homer for Cliff. So he's getting the most out of the limited time available to him after he comes back from surgery. And he drives it out to Ichiro. And a quick one, two, three, shut down second inning for Jose Fernandez, who leads it 3 0.
Nick David Peralta. That's because back in 2011, David Peralta wasn't making the cash you think major leaguers make, and he was going to play in the independent league. He was living in Florida, needed to get to Texas, so he did what anyone would do. He got a job to get some gas money. That job was at McDonald's. He worked there for one month. David told me in my Fox Sports, Arizona.com web exclusive, that he was the guy who would take the orders. He also got really good at making fries. Now, for the record, I did ask him if he prefers hamburger or chicken McNuggets. He went with the hamburger or even a cheeseburger, he said, and uh, probably being the Big Mac. And, guys, you know, for everyone who says it's so easy, the road to the majors, I'm sure, BB, you can agree. It's a tough road. you got to really do things to make ends work, ends meet until you get to the big show. Absolutely. For some guys, uh, it, it turns into a dirt road at times with no map. Now, other guys, uh, you know, you go from the draft, a little tune-up into minor Ooh. leagues, and suddenly they're in the big leagues. But... Uh, yeah, most guys have something somewhere in between what Tuffy and David Peralta have gone through to get here and what a guy like Jose Fernandez has gone to get here. Yeah, as a youngster with his family on a raft essentially from Cuba, just a horrifying story. He had to save his mother from drowning at one point, Jose Fernandez. Prado grounded out his first time. I remember you telling me stories about you and Joan, the, oh. the jobs you had to, you both had to take during your minor league travels. To do what you got to do. Uh, I mean, I, I got a million of them. Got called up from rookie ball to A ball and uh, had to stay with a former college roommate in Idaho Falls for the night because we didn't have enough money for a hotel. Got to Fresno, California. Thought I was going to outsmart the team and let them leave for a road trip so I could have a couple days to find an apartment as Prado grounds out to Pennington and Short. Yeah, so we uh, arrived in Fresno about 8 o'clock in the morning and I looked at the schedule. Oh, the team's playing in San Jose tonight. So if we stall long enough they'll be gone already that'll give us a day to find an apartment and then I'll go join the team tomorrow well, we pull in the parking lot at the in Fresno at the ballpark and the bus is just pulling out of the gate so the bus he stopped I got out of the car grabbed my duffel bag threw it underneath the bus and got on and bye honey she didn't know a soul didn't know a person in Fresno California it's not like you just call her cell. I mean, this is what 19 uh, what 1940. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But it, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it, no phones. Well, you know, leave a number at the YMCA. I mean, how do you find her? Well, fortunately, there was a representative of the ball club that was there on the uh, on the travel day and, you know, kind of hooked her up with the trainer's wife who pointed her in the right direction, a realtor that helped some of the other guys find apartments. And, uh, you know, by the time I got back from the road trip, she was all moved into the apartment and. Hi, honey. I'm home. <laughs> Slow roller to always. I mean, Joan's a trooper. She deserves the oh, yeah. Medal of Honor for what she's been through. Another time, uh, I was playing in Shreveport, Louisiana. We were actually on a road trip. This was only like 10 days, maybe two weeks into the season, and we were in Jackson, Mississippi, when I got the call to go to come here to Phoenix. As a matter of fact, to AAA, and. Uh, they gave me a bus ticket from Jackson, Mississippi to Shreveport, Louisiana at midnight. That was a fun ride. <laughs> Got back to Shreveport, packed a suitcase, went to the airport once again. Bye, honey. And she was left to pack up the apartment, load up the van, drive cross country by herself to meet me here in Phoenix. Wow. And believe me, I, I, I'm not bragging about these stories, but there's a million of them. You yeah. look in both these dugouts and guys have gone through similar things and the wives and girlfriends have kind of been left to clean up the mess as guys either move up or move down the ladder. Boy, Robbie Ray really not happy with himself out there. You could clearly see him frustrated. I hope it's frustration, not an injury. Watch the reaction here. Now that's the kind of reaction you do keep an eye on because yeah. you know in the dugout you're not sure. Did he tweak something or is he just upset? That was uh, pretty demonstrative. Well, if he's upset, it'd be understandable because he really hasn't had a stretch in any of his ball games recently where he's uh, lost command of the strike zone the way he did in that second and early here in the third. That seems to be okay. You always wonder when guys react like that. You're worried about tweaking an oblique or something, or one of your necks, one of your necks, left or right neck. This is there, two and two. 
It's funny that all those moving stories and the road that you, you take to get here. It, bottom line is everybody just looks at the stat line and nobody knows the story behind it. Oh, yeah. What you hit at Shreveport. Oh. You don't know what I went through in Shreveport <laughs> or my wife. I mean, <laughs> it's quite a story. He's gone full on McGee now with two outs, three and two. But, you know, looking back, those are some of the things that you remember the most. You know, the things that just pop up out of nowhere. You, you weren't anticipating the call up or you weren't anticipating a send down and catches you completely by surprise and changes your life. Casey McGee caught by surprise right there. Third strikeout for Robbie Ray, who bounces back with a one, two, three, third. Diamondbacks need some runs, though. They're down three nothing. This picture and I go, are you kidding me? It's paradise out here. What a beautiful night in the valley. Here we are down there, Chase Field, downtown Phoenix, the Diamondbacks and the Marlins. A gorgeous night home in Arizona. Big fan of our home in the summertime. Honest to God, you know, with arthritis in every joint in my body, I love this heat. <laughs> And then you go home at night after a ball game and it's still 85 or 90 degrees. You can jump in the pool, look at the stars. It's absolutely good. Oscar Hernandez, the rookie catcher. It's that off the screen in front of the D-backs dugout. One for three with a double in his first big league start. That was Saturday. And he got that first career hit off. Jake Peavy, a double that he just sort of tugged down the left field line. <laughs> He got pulled by a PV change. I've got way out in front, but really did a nice job of extending his swing, getting the barrel on it, and hooked it down that third baseline. And then scored. Even better. Came all the way around. And he said, as you pointed out, it really did sort of complete the realization that, okay, I'm in the big leagues now. Not just the hit, but the fact that he made it all the way around and was able to come home. I mean, hits are nice. Everybody loves getting base hits as Hernandez chases that one out of the strike zone. But uh, getting on the plate helps your team win ball games. Of course, if the base hit drives in a couple of teammates, that's a good thing too. But yeah, you want points. You want points. You want to help your team win. And again, Oscar, a late addition to the lineup. Wellington Castillo was scratched just before game time with tightness in his left hamstring, just a precautionary measure. The Diamondbacks said. So it's Oscar back there with Robbie Ray. There's Wellington Castillo, who looked fine. Was taking batting practice all afternoon, in fact. Working closely with Turner Ward, taking some extra hitting. As the strikeouts for Welly been piling up a bit lately. And so they're trying to get him fixed. Ray down one and two. Castillo was actually punched out 10 times in his last 17 at bats, so he's been a free swinger up there. Robbie Ray looks at strike three. Now five strikeouts already. Through two and two-thirds for Jose Fernandez. 
He's retired six in a row. Now, Bob, I, I, I know they told you before the ball game, but uh, after this uh, final out, you're done. Huh? Yeah, you're, you're going next door oh. to work with the great Rich Walls. There they are, Marlins TV, and Tommy Hutton is coming over here to replace you. You know, it's one inning, now, but if it goes well, <laughs> you know, I can't make any promises. Pack my cabana wear. <laughs> Have Joan pack everything up again, <laughs> honey, and head for Miami. We're going to Miami. No, we're not going to lose you that easy, that's for sure. And Ciarte flies out to center. There's Gillespie. So Bob Burnley goes to the Marlins TV side. It's the announcer swap. And here's what's next, brought to you by CenturyLink. We're going to grill Tommy Hutton about Carter Caps and that illegal yeah, motion. Yeah. So Tommy better have his act together because he's about to get hammered. Game one inning every year with uh, the great Tommy Hutton joins us. Bob Brenly on the other side over there with Rich Walt. Welcome. It's great to have you here again. Great to be here, Steve. Great to be here. I enjoy doing this. It's fun because we get another guy's perspective on what's going on here because we tend to look at everything through our own little rose-colored or in our case, Sedona red-colored glasses. And it's nice to get another perspective on things. I think we talked about this last year. We, we wanted to do it for more than one inning. Well, I, I, I told Brenly, if this goes well, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> so he's ready. He's over there. See, with look at they're, they're nudging up to each other already. It's there. disgusting, isn't it? Michael Morse leads off the fourth. So I want to talk to you. Go ahead. Woo. And I said this on the air last night. Literally, when you came in the booth Mondays, you always do because you're great. You come in, you say hello, the big greeting, everything's great to see you. The first thing you said to me was. Carter Caps, it's legal. <laughs> like you, you came in with your own disclaimer. And, well, because uh, and I, I knew you would have an issue. Stir. See, I knew you would have an issue with it. Yeah, and let me tell you, everybody's talking about this. I mean, how does first well, of all, how does anybody ever hit the guy? Well, first he throws a hundred miles an hour. It's That's crazy, right. isn't it? Uh, everybody's talking about it. However, it's a it's a legal well, delivery. That's... So I I don't now, know why they continue to talk about it because. He had issues last year, and he had more of a hop toward the plate. This year, he was with the big club. They sent him down to the minor leagues to kind of change that a little bit. He actually had a couple of games in the minor leagues where they ruled it an illegal pitch. Right. So what he did, he, he kept the contact with the rubber and eliminated as big a hop as he had last year and had to drag that foot. He drags the foot, which makes oh, no. it legal. And there are guys, Jordan Walden, yeah. uh, Tim Lincecum. You look at other guys, there are guys who do that too. So watch the back foot here. That's the key, right? So you're the defense attorney. Go ahead, make your case. There, he drags it. You, it's you, all see, the, you see the hop. It's, it's all one motion. I'm the defense attorney because I go to MLB and I say, what do you think? And they say it's legal. 
Case closed. <laughs> I mean, that is uh, that is the ruling from the high court. So you guys are in the I've clear. gone to the Supreme Court. <laughs> well, it sounds like you have to because people are upset about this. And Chip Hale was one of them last night. Chip. Uh, Every manager has complained about it. and But they all are told the same thing, right? They it's, are told the same thing. And as you said, it's legal. The, the other thing about that, Steve, is yeah. that right now the Marlins are 39 and 55. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> how what, good uh, can the guy be? Yeah, what, uh, what, what harm can it do right now? <laughs> he is unbelievable. Uh, a lot of people said, "Why doesn't he close? Why doesn't he close?" Well, be, number one, AJ Ramos done a great job. Yeah, he, he had and the blown save Sunday, but other than that, he's been really good. He has. He's had uh, two blown saves. He's been terrific. Let's hear from Chip Hale now. This was Chip after the game when Carter Capps pitched. It plays to the integrity of the game for me. I mean, that's just, uh, you know, the rule. You have your foot supposed to be in contact with the rubber and uh, at least close. And he's not even close. And the league's okay to it. And the umpires, you know, they, they really have no say in it right now. Uh, the league said it's okay and they have to let it go. So it's very difficult to watch. Um, he's throwing 100 miles an hour almost and jumping at you. It's not easy. JT Ryuto. What about that reaction? Well, difficult to watch. I'm sure Chip Hale wouldn't want to face him either no. when he was playing. You know, it, it, until the league says otherwise, it, he's going to continue the way he has, and he's been tremendous. He's one of those guys, just about every team has A.J. Ramos the closer, but every team has that guy who has closer stuff. Sure. And he certainly does, and yeah. down the road that could be where he ends up. Then there will be more controversy if he's closing games. How about that, huh? <laughs> Well, you know, some of the Diamondbacks guys earlier today, Tommy, were kind of mimicking it. We, we caught this video. This is Dave McKay, Bob Gephardt. And but everybody. That's, a, that's a big skip, though. See, that's that's not what he's doing. Everybody was talking do, about Do you realize this. Dave McKay and I were teammates in Toronto? I fly ball deep center, and Ciarte was there. So I've known Dave for a long time. With the Blue Jays. Well, that's right. <laughs> I mean, he, so, so he Dave, that was everything. a little over the top. That was a little over the top. <laughs> so he's illegal, but Carter Caps is fine. He's fine. <laughs> Do you guys have to you get tired of defending this all the time? Well, it, it seems like, like every, yeah, yeah, everywhere we go, and, and you're right, we'll probably hear it in San Diego. Marlins have a four game series against the Padres. We've yet to see the Padres this year. So they've yet to see Carter Caps. That's right. So get ready. Of course, they have a college coach as a manager now, so that might be a whole different thing. Yeah, ASU. We've, uh, we've, uh, I've been told our truck has sent the video on ahead. So Which, they, the Dave McKay video? And all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you may want to prepare your defense again, <laughs> counselor. And, and then if it really gets heated, I'll just defer everything to my partner, Rich Waltz. Rich is very good at that. Yeah, he is. He's, he, the, he's the talker. He keeps a level head. I, I tend to go in another direction. <laughs> Well, we wanted to get your take on it because, uh, as you said, it was such a, a hot topic today all over the Valley. People you know were what? talking about Last it on the year, radio here at the ballpark. You know what? Last year when it was more exaggerated, there weren't as many complaints because he wasn't as successful. <laughs> it's funny how those two and things all of a always sudden, go together. Right? When he went to the minor leagues and, and got a slider to go along with it, which he now can throw for a strike all the time, now that he's become successful, it's a story. Well, he is something else. I tell you that. He's impossible to hit. Strike two now. Robbie Ray's settled in a bit here. He's retired six in a row. Steve, we were talking over in the other booth. Do you think Robbie Ray is having a little problem with Oscar Hernandez in, in getting on the same page? I don't. I, it's hard to tell exactly. I, don't, I, I just don't think he's commanding the fastball or any of his pitches hey. for that matter tonight. Oscar's first start. Tommy was with Chase Anderson, and those two had a lot of trouble getting together. I mean, it was a it was a real problem, especially with a runner on second base. It seems to be going tonight much more smoothly than it did for Oscar's first start. Uh, the the issue with Robbie seems to be he just can't throw a strike, or at least in that rough second inning. And he's been solid. He's been really good, really good. He's been the most consistent Diamondback starting pitcher. Where are the Marlins right now? People uh, in Miami down on the Marlins? It, it hasn't worked out the way Boy, they Well, it worked. hasn't worked out. Uh, uh, some players underperforming injuries. Of course, right now, without two all-stars, Stanton and, and D. Gordon. We learned about that last year. We lost Pollock and Goldie, and it's tough to win like that. It, it really is. Uh, there was a point in time during the season that three of the five starting pitchers 
were on the disabled list. Four, if you counted Jose Fernandez, who was coming back from Tommy John surgery. And uh, you know, wondered when you got Ichiro, you know, where are they going to get this guy at bats? They might have one of the best outfields in baseball, yet they've needed him. He's played all year. He's had a lot of opportunities, probably more than he thought he would. Yeah, I didn't think anybody saw Marcelo Zuna going to the minor leagues. That's been a struggle. That's uh, we talked about underperformance, and there have been a couple of players who've been in that category too. What does you can't win without your star players, but what does the loss of John Carlos Danton mean in terms of the marquee factor? Because that's the reason for many folks that you watch the Marlins. Yeah, you, you want to watch. You don't want to miss any of his at-bats because you don't know how far he's going to hit one. And it's it's tough. It does a whole lot to the lineup. It changes the complexion of the lineup. It changes how a manager pitches against the lineup. It changes how... Everything is set up, so it's a, it's a tough loss. A guy like Stanton, as as you would say the same with Goldschmidt out of the lineup too. Yeah, we lost Goldie for the last two months last year, and at that point we had lost Trumbo and Pollock and Corbin and on and on Hernandez, and it was one after the other. So yeah. now the Marlins have lost the uh, the best. Uh, I'm not going to say one of the best. I'm going to say the best power hitter in the league, and they've lost their leadoff man, who was leading the league in, in hits. And, and second in stolen bases. Here's uh, the Stanton injury, the broken handmade bone. Yeah, you could see it. It was early in the game. He felt it right there. He did take another at bat. It's a, it's a bone that, that we found out that you really don't need in your hand. So once they do the surgery, uh, the recovery time, they're saying four to six weeks. Hopefully it's four weeks. I know Stanton hopes it's four weeks. Echeverria, fly balls, and Yasmani Tomas out there tonight. And that'll end the inning when we come back. More Tommy Hutton will take a long look at their ace, Jose Fernandez. He is putting on a show here tonight. We look at Jose Fernandez, who Tommy is putting on a show here. He's retired seven straight. He's got five strikeouts. You know, he has missed a beat. A couple of fastballs there, a, a backdoor slider, and another hard slider. He has not, Steve, missed a beat since returning from Tommy John. This is fourth start. It's amazing, isn't it? And, and it was only basically a calendar year for him. I mean, we look at Matt Harvey, it's 18 months. Patrick Corbin, it's 16 months. This guy, it was 13 months and two weeks, and he was back out there. I was told by the uh, the rehab coordinator by the people who were around him when he was coming back from this that they had never seen anybody as dedicated uh, put in the time that he did to get himself ready. I, I see the 97 the 98 the 99 other than that and that's a lot but other than that what makes him so good. Well you you see that you see the sharp slider you see the change up when you see 87 88. Which is some guy's fastball. Look out for that one. Chris Owings gives it a run. Christian Yelich, the gold lover out there, runs it down. 
Nice to have a gold glove in left field. He's a really nice young player. And by the way, that, that's impressive about the Diamondbacks is the outfield. The defense you guys have in the outfield is tremendous. Yeah, we, we get spoiled, but this guy's a, a young player to watch for sure. He is not one that's uh, underperformed. Yelich having a very strong year. But to get back to Jose, the changeup, the slider, the fastball, the makeup, uh, the type of character he has. Uh, he's a young kid who. Goldie sends it out to each oh, 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 oh. This guy's pretty good too. Paul Goldschmidt is in at second. That's his 22nd double. He's two for two. Just the second hit against Jose Fernandez, and Goldie's got both of them. It's unfortunate for us we don't get a chance to see him as much as we'd like. But uh, he is fun to watch. I like watching him play first base. He's solid there. That one got up on Fernandez a bit. Got a great approach. Now, what is uh, the rest of the league's perception about Goldie? Oh, it's uh, just a solid player, a solid person, too. You hear that all over. Yeah, he's, too, he's really too good to be true in, in, in so many ways. David Peralta now. Think about Jose when he came over from Cuba. He was 16, 17 years old. He went to high school in Tampa. He took extra English classes mm -hmm. so he could command the language better. Uh, this offseason, he became an American citizen, became a U.S. citizen. He went through that process. He's still only 22. It's unbelievable. Goldie will stay put. He turns 23 July 31st, Jose Fernandez. Yeah, it is, uh, it is amazing. And I, I look back at even last year when he was injured, he, he'd had just eight starts. He was leading the major leagues in strikeouts at that time. Yeah, he was an all-star two years ago, rookie of the year, finished third in the Cy Young voting at the age of 20, 12 and 6 with a 2-1-9. And then last year, 4-2 and two with only eight starts, was shut down after his last start May 9th, and then the Tommy John surgery about a week later. And here he is basically a year later back, and it's like he hasn't skipped a beat. Six strikeouts now. And there you have a good look in his uh, a rookie year 2013 where he ranked the whip look at that third strikeouts uh, for nine innings just tremendous uh, you know that's why he was rookie of the year. I mean and he's so efficient he's got tonight two three pitch strikeouts and three four pitch strikeouts he doesn't just strike you out he does it in three or four pitches. I was telling uh, telling your partner before the game. He's, he's so sharp beyond his years that he wants to get early outs. He doesn't want to waste a lot of pitches. He'll take a few ground ball outs mm -hmm. because he knows he's on a pitch limit. He knows uh, what the organization is doing with him, and he wants to go as deep as he can into ball games. 40 pitches, 29 strikes. Yeah, two, uh, two six inning starts and one seven inning start. And he could have gone more his last outing in Philadelphia. He only threw 70 pitches in six innings. I mean, he is the complete package. He, he reminds me, and I hear this all the time. This isn't me talking. It's just one thing I hear. And then you watch him pitch and you get it of a, a young King Felix. Mm -hmm. Same kind of build, same kind of stuff. Felix Hernandez. That's a good comparison. Things have worked out pretty good for him. Too. I think so, yeah. Going to get a look at uh, Felix Hernandez next week. We go to Seattle. Ah. So this will be good practice. Beautiful ballpark, too. The amazing thing about Jose, and it, it'll probably even out a little bit, but so far in his early young career, he's 14 and 0 at home. I, I saw that. Uh, it's amazing. He's yet to lose at home. No loss. Morse at first. This is going to get Goldie. Home of the Diamondbacks are on the board. They had the Cuban matchup there. <laughs> he sure did. Jose Fernandez and Yasmani Tomas. Well, Yasmani's been scuffling a little bit lately. The strikeouts have been piling up, but he goes down and shoots that one the other way. Boy, he's got a solid swing. To me, he looks like a a young and a stronger Marlon Bird. 
That's a good call. Same kind of build. Yeah. Yeah, really strong arms and hands. There's Jake Lamb. Yeah, you were mentioning Tommy Jose at home. I mean, to begin his career, 14 and 0 in 22 starts at Marlins Park, where his ERA for his career is 117. Yeah, his ERA at home is Zach Grenke like. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that is a yeah. major league record for most consecutive home starts without a loss to start your career. And he pitched a, a pretty good game here in 2013. He lost. I was I was watching watching that game. Yeah, but he right. went seven and a third, gave up just three hits, a couple of runs. What to what do you attribute that success at home? Number one, it's a, it's a great ballpark to pitch in. Yeah, big outfield. But number two, I, I think he just gets up even more. He's got a great routine. There's a tremendous Cuban uh, restaurant, Cafe Versailles, that he goes to every home start. So he has a great routine. It's the Cuban food. His his mother, his grandmother, are usually at all the home starts. Now he had quite a story getting to this country. I, I've read that what they went through just to get here. That's horrifying. But well, he had a couple of attempts failed. Yeah. Two and two on Jake Lamb. So you guys gonna. Start selling off pieces here. They're going to move Latos. They're going to move Heron. You know, uh, if if anybody is moved, I would uh, I would guess one of those veteran pitchers because uh, pitching is in such need around baseball and and guys certainly the way Latos pitched uh, last night. Uh, Heron has been their most consistent pitcher all year. Jake Lamb drives that one deep to right center. Gillespie on the run. They won't get there. And here comes Big Yaz Money. Jake Lamb. Diamondbacks coming back on the kid. That's three hard hit balls, Tommy, in the city. They haven't touched him up until now. Yeah, all of a sudden he's made a few mistakes out over the plate. Breaking ball, tried to get it back door, it got middle of the plate. And I've really enjoyed watching Lamb. He's a, he's a good young player. And he smoked that ball over the head of Gillespie. Yeah, he has not been quite the same since he missed 42 games with that foot injury since he's come back from the DL. It's still been a, a slow, very incremental progress, but there's a ton to like about Jake Lamb. They're very high on him. A plus defender down there at 30. He looked great down there last night, I thought. A bunch of defensive plays. Well, it looks like uh, Tony LaRusse is doing the right thing here. Pennington drives it to left center. Right back. And Yelich runs that one down. A strand lamb. Tommy Hutton, thank you so much, sir. It was great right, to have Steve. you. Enjoyed it. We'll see you next year. Good luck. Good luck the rest of the year. Appreciate it.
How will you live the gig life? By Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Jack in the Box. Get the new steak and egg breakfast burrito at Jack in the Box. It's not your basic breakfast burrito. Well, I, I don't know how to break it to you, but get out. I got two runs over there. Your bad I, luck. I was on the road. <laughs> Tommy Hutton. And our thanks to the great Tommy Hutton, who got us a couple of runs there. Now Bob Brenly is back as Jose Fernandez. Wow, hits a one-hopper, and it goes right through Jake Lamb. You won't see that very often. Jake, who was spectacular down there last night, let one get away. That yeah, was just next door bragging to Rich Waltz and the uh, Marlins fans about down in Florida. I mean, can we get him back now? The, the airtight defense of this Diamondbacks infield, especially that left side. Jake Lamb and Nick Ahmed, and what happens? So... Fernandez, the pitcher, aboard for the second time of the ball game. He's got an RBI double, and now he's reached on the error by Lamb. How'd it go over there? It was good. It was good. I, I complimented them on their ballpark. I told them, you know, politics and money aside, I know you guys take a lot of hits down there in South Florida, but speaking as a visiting broadcaster, I love that ballpark. Yeah, I'm a fan, too. I hate the colors, but architecturally, I think it's spectacular. But see, even uh, talking to Rich Walsh next door, he said the colors... You know, you know you're in South Florida. Yeah. You know, we were talking about the ballparks back in the 70s and 80s where you could blindfold a player and drop them into one of a dozen ballparks and you wouldn't know where you were. They all looked exactly alike. But there's no doubt when you're in that ballpark. Ichiro 0 for 2. Yanks that one down the line. That's a fair ball. Fernandez is going to come on in. Ichiro's in at third, and it's an RBI triple. So the error at third base by Lamb comes back to bite the Diamondbacks, and it's 4 2 now. Well, that was a classic Ichiro swing right there. Yeah, it really was. Unfortunately, left that breaking ball on the inner part of the plate right in the middle of his bailout. You know, the Jake Lamb error will show up in the box score tomorrow, but uh, that's an error right there. When you hang an off-speed pitch inside to a guy who steps in the bucket as badly as Ichiro does, that, that's an error on the pitcher. That's really, really bad location. And just after the Diamondbacks had finally gotten to Fernandez, who's now uh, taking a breather after running around the bases like that, that especially hurts, and now it's a 4-2 ball game. He's the franchise. You got to keep him comfortable and happy. So now Robbie Ray's down 4 2. Nobody out. He's got a runner at third, and it's Prado's 0 for 2. And if the Marlins don't get him, the pitch count probably will. His next delivery will be number 88 on the ball game. Looks like Matt Stites is getting loose down in the Diamondback bullpen. Here is the right hander, Matt Stites. Sanderson for bullpen. And something we saw early in this season, not only from Robbie Ray, but pretty much the entire pitching staff. The foul balls has reared its ugly head again tonight. 17 foul balls already against Robbie Ray. Nine of those coming with two strikes on the hitter. He has struggled this year at times to put guys away when he's ahead in two strike counts. It's been an ongoing theme. Yeah, there's only really been only two pitches in the ball game that the Marlins swung at and missed completely. Well, at least they know if it's any consolation that they can get to Fernandez a little bit. They proved that in the last inning. That one misses, and it's two balls and a strike to Prado. Ninety pitches, only fifty-four for strikes. Three and one. Poor Marlins guys, they're always being asked to defend their ballpark, their pitcher, their ownership. <laughs> I mean, people are coming at them all the time. Prado belts that one and 
the center for an RBI single, and it's a 5 2 ball game. Chris Prado's second hit in the series, Chip Hale. So the Marlins on their way out after tonight. We take a look at our Chevron upcoming pitching matchup. The Brewers are in for the first of four tomorrow. Mike Fires for Milwaukee and rookie Zach Godley in his major league debut just called up from Double A Mobile. He spent most of the season at Single A Visalia. So he's had only three appearances for the Diamondbacks over the A ball level, but tomorrow night he's the guy. Christian Yelich. Well, Chip will have to break out his best Hoosier speech. I mean, the rubber is exactly 60 feet, six inches away from the plate, just like it is in Kane County, just like it is in Mobile. Just get the signs from your catcher, try to hit spots all night long. That really doesn't change much. If you allow it to, if you look at the hitter and say, wow, it's Alonis Ramirez. That's really the possibility of trouble. Double play ball here, Pennington Owens. Yelich runs really well. Is out at first, two down. Take a look at Zach Godley. I, from this video, Bob, you like what oh. you see. Look at the movement on these pitches. I don't know what it is. I mean, that was a little cutter right there, but that particular pitch, uh, you'll see him drop it in there time and time again. I'm not sure what it is, but it's filthy. I mean, that's just dropping off the table right there. And again, eight and three at Visalia with an outstanding 2 2 7 ERA in the Cal League. One and one in three starts with double A mobile Zach Godley who they acquired from the Cubs in the Miguel Montero deal this winter will make his major league debut tomorrow against the Brewers. Here's Casey McGee a former Brewer. It's always fun when a rookie comes up to make his big league debut. I mean this system is so loaded with young pitching talent. And they're not all going to hit. Some guys, like you were talking about earlier, some guys are going to exceed expectations. Others might not live up to them. But it's always fun when you have a rookie guy coming up to make his big league debut. Something to watch. Archie Bradley was throwing with a towel in the bullpen earlier today, trying to get that shoulder healthy. It's been a long year for Archie. And he was going through a routine with uh, Mel Sotomayor Jr. out there where he uses his pitching motion but instead of throwing a baseball there's just a towel that kind of waves through the air as they try to get that shoulder feeling 100 percent a lot of guys used to do the old towel drill uh, Mark Pryor was one guy that used to do it uh, right. religiously and a lot of people around baseball think maybe to excess uh, that caused some of his arm problems that he had that ended his career prematurely but uh, it's a fairly common routine that you do with a guy coming back from an injury or throwing between starts and doesn't want to put a lot of stress and strain on his arm, but still wants to go through the range of motion. And Archie's been a big question mark. You just kind of wonder, well, you know, what's the story with Archie? Where is he? Well, he's he's just coming along. Not much to report, really. Baseball limbo that that needs a little rest. You know, you just want to calm things down. Anything that he has going on in that throwing arm. There's no real end date for it. It just depends on how Archie feels, uh, how the ball looks when he does start throwing uh, off the mound again. How's it look coming out of his hand? Well, a two out walk to Casey McGee, the third walk of the ball game issued by Robbie Ray, who just clearly did not have that command that we normally see. And his night will end right here after exactly 100 pitches, only 58 for Strangler. We'll stay here and continue celebrating Randy Johnson's Hall of Fame induction Sunday with a road to Cooperstown as Matt Stites comes in. Here now, Randy chooses from his favorite moment during his time with the Diamondbacks. The moment would have to be when Gonzo got the base hit. There was so much uncertainty. <laughs> My goodness, you know, what a great year and individual accomplishments so many players had on that team that led us to the World Series. We win game one, win game two, and, you know, it is what it is. We lost games three, four, and five. We come back here in a must-win situation in game six. I pitched that game, and it's every pitcher's dream to have a lot of runs. I had got 15 scored for me, I believe, that day. So I had the luxury of coming out and having a little bit of reserve in the tank and uh, then 
you know, we go to game seven, you know, it's something that you come to spring training about and everybody's on the same page and that's everybody's goal and we had a veteran team so everybody's mindset was that and that only and you know the baseball season's long there's a lot of ups and downs injuries and you know uh, but I don't think too many people deviate or wavered from that you know outlook that we wanted and uh, you know we got there and that's the greatest moment for me because it has to be I mean what you play the, that's what you play the game for. Randy Johnson, the road to Cooperstown. The big weekend is coming up for the big unit. We talked about that the other day with you about that decision to when you checked in with Randy in game six after the 15 runs and said, I uh, save a little sum for tomorrow night just in case. And he was all for it. Oh, he was all for it, anxious to go out there. And that was one of the great moments that uh, actually wasn't really part of the ball game when Randy came out of the dugout and walked down to the bullpen. I mean, he wasn't even in the game yet, but I think everybody that was here at the ballpark understood we're going to see something special tonight. Matt Stites' fourth appearance of the year. He'll work to Michael Morse with two outs and Casey McGee at first. Here goes McGee of all people. And he's in there. Stolen base. First of the year for Casey McGee. And he's the last guy you would expect to see attempting stolen base. Real close. Chris Owings brought that tag right down to the base, but it looks like uh, McGee got his foot in underneath. Chip Hale says, all right, let's play on. That's a veteran move right there. McGee's not fast. He's not going to steal a lot of bases. That's his first of the season, but you got a new relief pitcher into the ball game. He's focused on making a good pitch here to Michael Morse, and he just took off at first base. Figured that Stites wasn't going to pay any attention to it. Now Casey McGee is so slow he has to speed up to stop. <laughs> Michael Morse. Going two. The view from the press box here at Chase Field. The esteemed members of the fourth estate covering the ball game. Your favorites, the sports writers. Yeah, I like sports writers. Hey. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now they're great. That's where all the stories are written. Questions formulated to ask uh, lucky managers after ball games. Mm -hmm. Or don't even bother to come to the post-game press conference and go ahead and write your story anyway. Just make it up. That works sometimes too. Well, that, that didn't take long. <laughs> I hit the right button. <laughs> well, and certainly it's to be expected if you're a World Series manager, you're going to be second guest and third guest and fourth guest uh, by people that have never seen your team play a game all season long. One and two. <laughs> Called strike three. That's Dites. Good pitch. He rings up Morris, but the Marlins get two more. They lead it five two. <laughs>
in their heels as they jump over the foul line as a salute to Ron Santo, who passed away in 2010, was posthumously, or rather, yeah, 2010 was posthumously inducted into the Hall of Fame. And as a tribute to the Cubs, the day that Ronnie was inducted into the Hall of Fame, they decided to have their own little tribute and click their heels, which is what Ron Santo used to do after every Cubs victory. Great photos of him from those uh, late 60s Cubs team, that 69 team that lost out or was beaten out by the Mets late of him doing that trademark heel kick after every win. Oscar Hernandez leads off the Diamondback fifth. They trail at 5-2. Oscar struck out his first time against Jose Fernandez, who has got six strikeouts. Make it seven. And now Nick Ahmed will hit for the pitcher, Matt Stites. That's a deflector shield slider. It almost looks like it hits something and changes direction when it gets up there to the plate. That's his third three pitch strikeout in the game. He's got three four pitch punch outs and one six pitch strikeout. So Ahmed hits for Stites. Nick not in the starting lineup tonight. He's got one hit in the series. That was his triple in Monday night series opener. 232 on the year and six home runs. Sanderson Ford bullpen. Dominic Leone just up from Double A Mobile. Warming up. We'll see Leone coming up. Acquired from the Mariners along with Wellington Castillo in the Mark Trumbo deal earlier this year. And he, uh, by all reports, has looked very good lately for the Mobile Bay Bears. Where he was a teammate of Zach Godley's down there, pitching for Robbie Hammock. And Godley makes his big league debut here tomorrow night. He'll start against Milwaukee. Wondering why Nick didn't start the ball game. Well, struggling a little bit right now with the plate. He's stuck in a two for 26. So a night off, Cliff Pennington is in at shortstop. Hey fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between the four and six the following day at participating locations. Fernandez has been really efficient. 55 pitches, 41 strikes, and now eight strikeouts. And his, his combination of pitches, when he's on top of his game, there's no question this guy's going to throw a no hitter, if not multiple no hitters in his career. He is the genuine article. Ender in Ciarte, 0 for 2. He has struck out in fly down. Who's A Fernandez? Speaking of genuine articles, <laughs> churro dog time. Oh, that's like a billion calories right there. Give me two of them. <laughs> to go. <laughs> Mention that. Fernandez had only taken basically 13 and a half months between Tommy John surgery and his return to the big leagues. It's quite a contrast and Tommy Hutton talked to us about that. They have been amazed or were amazed by his commitment to his rehab program. Which seemed to accelerate the timetable a bit. Dan Jennings was talking about that the effort. That Fernandez put into his rehab routine. And Jennings had said he'd never seen anyone go about it any harder than Fernandez did. So 13 months and two weeks later, he was back in the big leagues. Three and one. Only the second three ball count in the game for Jose Fernandez. Just been filling up that strike zone. A little flare. Echeverria is out there. And Fernandez works a one, two, three, fifth. He's got a five, two lead.
lots of great giveaways still to come here this year. Get your tickets right now. Saturday, the Randy Johnson Hall of Fame bobblehead, courtesy of Fry's Food Stores. Then Sunday, July 26th, first 5,000 kids get the D-backs insulated lunch bag for back to school. Courtesy of Arizona Milk Producers. Then on Saturday, August 8th, pick up your Randy Johnson number 51 commemorative T-shirt. Courtesy of Fry's Food Stores. Get your tickets for one of all of these games right now at dbacks.com. These are ones you don't want to miss. One of a kind items here at the ballpark. Dominic Leone, 23-year-old right-hander, acquired from Seattle in the Mark Trumbo deal earlier this year. Came over with Wellington Castillo. His second appearance for the Diamondbacks. His numbers at AA Mobile, 12 appearances, a 4.58 ERA. But uh, the stuff is really, really good. They love the strikeout to walk ratio 17 to 4. Good curve ball to start the sequence there from Leon. JT Real Muto leads it off. His second appearance with the Diamondbacks. He was outstanding last year with the Seattle Mariners. Woo. And his only previous appearance with the Diamondbacks did not go all that well. That was June 4th here at Chase Field against the Mets. He pitched one inning, gave up three runs, all earned, four hits. He was hit pretty hard and was sent to Double A Mobile right after the ball game, where he sort of figured it out down there. We are told, and has looked much better. Pitching out of the bullpen for Robbie Hammock's Bay Bears. Actually pitched one and two thirds innings for Mobile Monday night in Biloxi against the Shuckers, one of the great minor league names. Drilled to center, but Ryan at Ender. 17 and two thirds innings at Mobile. He walked only four with 17 strikeouts. The power and zip was back in that fastball. Center fielder, fastball that'll consistently be in the low to mid 90s. Occasionally he can hump it up there a little bit better than that. Real sharp breaking curveball. Cole Gillespie. He's got an RBI sack fly and a walk. So this is his first at bat. Leona, very live arm, had command issues with Seattle earlier this year. They kind of gave up on him a little bit. More walks than strikeouts. After he was just terrific last year. But uh, a lot of the Mariners people believe that he has got the stuff to be a back end bullpen arm with closer stuff. So here's a young guy, very high upside, high ceiling. Only 23 years old. He'll be 24 in October. This is trouble. There you go. Well, the wife is here. Cindy's uh, here at the game, and she just, uh, as she always does, goes downstairs to Wetzel's Pretzels, and she's brought some back to the booth. I'm going to put them right here. They're the cinnamon ones. <laughs> I can tell you one thing, Tommy Hutton's not getting these. No. No. Jake Lamb, that's a fair ball. Long throw. Gillespie runs well. And Jake makes the play. Two down. Hey, fans. Now's the time. Tweet us your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag AZDataStrongFan. AZDataStrongFan on the Twitter. And you might see your fan photo in our Diamondback TV broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. I got one for you. We, we Jeff Munn, Moneyball of uh, mm -hmm. Snake Talk fame. And I went to speak to the uh, Cronkite School over at Arizona State today. They have a, there's a Cindy and Dennis Lamb enjoying a Wetzel's Pretzels Bites on episode three of the Dennis Lamb Show. But we were talking to the young kids, and one of a young girl had a question in the back room. Raise her hand. I said, hi, what's your question? And she said, yeah, how do you guys pick the fan photo? Because last night, my dad was the fan photo. Get out of here. So what are the odds of that? Remember that great photo of the guy with the sunglasses yeah. and the red, white, and blue things? It looked like guitars or something on the shades. Yeah. yeah. So how about that for a coincidence? We're able to reach so many people with the, the Brenly Committee. That's really well hit. Deep left center. It's off the wall. Danny Echevarria pulls up at second with his 15th double.
middle of the plate breaking ball just kind of fluttered up there and stayed mid thigh mid plate. Echeverria bangs it off that wall in left center. And Peralta came up throwing to second base, but the Diamondbacks' middle infielders were lining up a cutoff toward third base. Fortunately, Paul Goldschmidt was trailing the runner into the bag at second and was there to take Peralta's throw. Yeah, he got a hanger that time from Leon. Well, Fernandez, the pitcher, will take the at bat. Echeverria at second, two down. Fernandez has had an RBI double. He reached on an error and scored a run. Leone put up a strikeout rate last year in Seattle of better than 25%. And he had a fastball that averaged 95 last year with the Mariners and a wicked slider that almost no one ever seemed to hit, but he hung that last one. Last year with the Mariners' 57 appearances, he had a 2.17 ERA. And was eight and two pitching out of the Seattle bullpen. Sixty-six innings, seventy strikeouts. And obviously, Chip Hale, being with Oakland, he saw a lot of Dominic Leone last year, and he told us that he has looked at Mobile like the guy that Chip saw in Seattle when he was with Oakland last year. And so he, here he is. Chip Hale said, yeah, last year this guy with the Mariners was filthy. And he's behind on the pitcher, 3-0. That's in there at 94. Run away. Dancing to music that only he can hear. Must have some fun socks on. For his sad feet. Three and two now. That's the thing most big leaguers nowadays. You don't even know if they are wearing socks. Well, they got the pants down right on top oh, of the shoes. You, over can't the even, you can't even tell they're wearing shoes. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> like droopy dog up there. Three and two. He's got an Albert Pujols like stance. He looks like Pujols right there. And he's hit like him tonight. He lines it to Owings. They strand the two out double. Diamondbacks trail the Marlins 5 2. Swinging a bat well lately, hitting over 300 over his last six games. But the last night, a couple of mechanical issues, dropping that back shoulder a little bit. So what do you do? You get out here early with Turner Ward, the hitting coach. 
iron out a few things, try to get back to that zone that Chris was in for a while there. He was really hitting the ball well. Yeah, all weekend long, he was just driving the ball. But, you know, one game, even sometimes one at bat, and you kind of fall back into old habits again and start doing some things mechanically that put you in a bad position. So Turner Ward right on top of it, had him out here early working on some things today. And hopefully we'll see the results here tonight. First pitch swinging, saw fly out to Yelich. One pitch, one out in the sixth for Fernandez, who's still at just 62 pitches. He's only thrown 17 balls outside the strike zone all night long. First baseman. Paul Goldie. Here's Goldie. Hey fans, when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's the day after every Diamondbacks victory. You get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. Well, Diamondbacks only have four hits against Fernandez, and Goldie has two of them. A single and a double. He has scored a run. He's now hit safely in four straight and six of his last seven. 345 to lead the National League. 98 can't catch up to it. He's down 0 2. 7th 0 2 count in the ball game for Jose Fernandez. I mean, this is it's something to watch. I mean, you just have to tip your cap. This guy is special. I mean, that slider he's throwing, it, it reminiscent of Dave Steve, the former Blue Jay great back in the day. One of the great underrated pitchers oh, of yeah. that whole decade. And that guy was mean, too. Yeah. He, I mean, I don't think he threw quite as hard as uh, Jose Fernandez, just as far as pure pure velocity. But, boy, his breaking stuff, both his curveball and his slider, just absolutely filled it. Two and two to Goldie. Something off. Nine strikeouts for Jose Fernandez. Oh, that thing's darting, diving all over the place. He will occasionally throw a two seam fastball, which begs the question why? <laughs> I think it's because he's he, bored. He gets bored. Yeah, this is so easy. I'm throwing 98 mile an hour fastballs by guys up in the zone. I'm making them look silly on breaking balls low and away. Let me try a two seamer here and see what happens. Well, we showed you that ball game that he homered off Kane. That was his comeback game off Tommy John. When six innings got the win. In his next start, he beat the Reds. Seven shutout innings. He gave up only six hits. No walks, nine strikeouts. And in that ball game, he got 23 swinging strikes. 23. Oh. Ken Crenshaw, the Diamondback trainer. Dugout is on Vic Carapazza. And Peralta still down. Well, initially, it looked like he was going to take the brunt of it off that front shoulder, but it sounded like it, uh, it caught at least part of his helmet. You can see him lift his head up there and try and look at Ken Crenshaw. Great, great story today, as you mentioned, Sports Illustrated, SI.com by Ben Reeder on David Peralta's remarkable road to the major leagues. And it's a story as we watch him run around the bases and hit triples and doubles and homers, we forget what he's been through just to get here. And how much he cherishes every moment. Looks like the Diamondbacks are uh, calling over to the dugout. I would assume AJ Pollock will come into the ballgame if David can't continue. It's good to see. Pale is getting into it with Karapatsa behind the plate now. About 
all the barking that was coming from the Diamondback dugout. And the home plate umpire had to go over there and tell him that's enough. He might have ejected somebody from the Diamondback bench. And we are told that there has been an ejection from the D-back dugout. It might be hitting coach Turner Ward. So Pollock will indeed come in and run for Peralta who thank goodness appears to be okay. But of course anytime you're hitting the head you're going to go through a series of tests just to make it absolutely sure. That Hernandez has bumped this year. Get another look. May have actually deflected off front shoulder and then off helmet, but uh, certainly would lessen the blow. I don't know. Got him pretty flush on that ear flap. So Diamondback Live post game show will have the latest. Reaction from the clubhouse and the latest news on the condition of David Peralta. That's coming up right after our ball game here. Pollock into pinch run. One of the things uh, most hitters don't like to talk about because they don't even like to think about it. But when you get hit in the helmet by a pitch, it is loud. Especially you get hit in the ear. Oh, I mean, you can imagine a guy like Fernandez or anybody that throws uh, in the mid to upper 90s and uh, taking the brunt of that off that plastic helmet lined with some padding. It. Uh, they call it getting your bell rung. It sounds like you've got your head inside a bell. Uh, we have confirmed, by the way, Turner Ward was ejected from the ball game by Vic, Vic Carapazza, the plate umpire. So Turner is gone, and Tomas as well. That's 10 strikeouts for Jose Fernandez, who leads it 5 2 after 6. Jose Fernandez came over to check on the condition of Peralta Diamondbacks dugout, especially Turner Ward apparently. Wanted Vic Carapazza, the plate umpire, to get Fernandez out of there. And he said, if I want him out, I'll get him out. Don't tell me what to do. And he ejected Turner Ward. So that was what happened with Turner. And we'll await news on the condition of David Peralta. A.J. Pollock takes over in center and Ender Inciarte replaces Peralta in left. Ichiro leads off the seventh Dominic Leone back out there for his second inning of work. Ichiro had an RBI triple and scored a run his last time up. He's one for three. Meanwhile, 10 strikeouts, no walks, only four hits allowed by Jose Fernandez. It's 
four strikeouts on three pitches, four strikeouts on four pitches. Eight of his ten. Four pitches or less. He's putting on a show, that's for sure. And there's no reason for him to hit Peralta there. You could see immediately his remorse and reaction when David went down. I would tend to agree with you, but uh, if your Turner Ward, one of your best hitters, goes down after getting hit in the head, they will throw out each row at first. Well, you don't feel quite the same way about it. You know? Sure. That's my guy. And you know the way Fernandez has been throwing tonight as he missed his spot by more than a couple of inches on any pitch and all of a sudden he hits a guy in the helmet. Those are the kind of things that upset a hitting coach or a manager. I think it was accidental. I'm 99% sure it was accidental, but uh, you know, if it's your guy, you feel a little differently about it. And with the way Turner works with these guys just tirelessly for hours a day. And we saw a video of that earlier with Chris Owings. The Diamondbacks didn't take batting practice today, but Turner Ward was out there for hours with Wellington Castillo and Chris Owings, and that's what Turner does every day. So he's very close to these guys. I remember when Junior Spivey came to the major leagues and just absolutely wore out Greg Maddox. And I don't know if Greg Maddox ever missed his spot by more than an inch or two in any game he ever pitched in the big leagues. And uh, after Junior had a fair amount of success against him, Maddox hit him right in the middle of the back. Well, that's not an accident. Mm -hmm. We got to barking at the mad dog and Bobby Cox down in Atlanta one night. I mean, certainly you can see it over the course of a long career. Maddox wanted to establish that, hey, you, know, you don't own me, but uh, Junior did own me. <laughs> <laughs> Leon starting to hump it up. Some life in that fastball, and he strikes out Prado. This is the guy that they had in Seattle all last year that put up that outstanding ERA. His fastball has a little natural cut to it when it's up in the zone like that. Prado swung right through that one. Christian Yelich, 0 for 3 so far. Yelich's seven game hitting streak on the line. Well, they're all standing at attention, but no one throwing in the Diamondback bullpen. Leon out there for his second inning of work. Showed you a moment ago there was no one throwing in the Diamondback bullpen, so now we'll have to figure something out as Leone is ejected immediately. Josh Colmenter. Well, it's turned into a very eventful night here in downtown Phoenix. Turner Ward has been ejected. David Peralta hit in the head with a pitch, and now Dominic Leone has been shown the door. One more look. Actually, not the leg. What do you think? Well, I have no doubt he was throwing that <laughs> intentionally. But, he, you know, he did it the right way. He hit him in the rear end, didn't throw up around his head or anything like that. And, you know, an eye for an eye. I, I mean, I, for me, that's when you just let it go. That's baseball. Issue warnings. Now, okay, you hit a guy in the helmet and you hit a guy in the rear end, that's enough. But to eject him immediately. Uh, I think that's a little excessive on Vic Carapazza's part. Excessive, even though there's no doubt in your mind that it was intentional. 
I mean, that's playing baseball. You know, I, once again, back in the day, that was expected. The batter would go up there expecting to get hit. Both teams knew it was going to happen. The umpire knew it was going to happen. All right, you got your guy back. Now let's play ball. That's enough. And that's something that is very important. And Tony Larusa talked about this ad nauseum when he was a manager in Oakland and St. Louis and Chicago. The uh, message has to be sent. If in your estimation, it was either egregious enough or intentional enough that your guy got hit, uh, you owed it to your team to show you were going to be behind him. And that's something that Tony was very specific about, especially with Albert Pujols in St. Louis when he got hit and it's like if you're going to come up and in you better be able to control it otherwise you don't have that right to come up and in because that's when guys get hurt they get hit in the hand and the fingers and the wrists and the head and Peralta was hit on a ball up and in special giveaways and more more than 600,000 fans have already left the Arizona Dodgers. So Josh Colmenger will get all the time he needs to warm up here. And while we have a moment, let's continue to celebrate Randy Johnson's Hall of Fame induction Sunday, the road to Cooperstown. It was Randy's choice to enter the Hall of Fame as a Diamondback, and right now he explains why. Swing and a miss, strike three, Randy Johnson. The 10 years that I played in Seattle were pivotal in my career. I won a Cy Young there, uh, AOS pennant there. It was my apprenticeship there. But then I went on and came here, and every year was my best year, if not better than any year I had in Seattle. I had to think with my head and my heart and get numbers and breakdowns of both places from the Hall of Fame. And they said, it's your choice. You're being inducted into the Hall of Fame based on your overall numbers. Now you need to narrow it down if you choose to. And it was a tough choice. I love both places, but the accomplishments that I achieved here were much greater than the accomplishments that I achieved in Seattle. The time that I spent in Seattle might have been Funner on the field, learning how to pitch and the excitement of playing with some of the best teammates I've ever had and the whole vibe in Seattle. I'll never forget Seattle. Randy Johnson, the big weekend coming up. Josh Colmenter ready to go now as he works to Casey McGee. Yelich over there at first with two outs after he was hit by the pitch from Dominic Leone, who was ejected immediately by Vic Carapazzo. That's a great little bit there with Randy Johnson, and I, I didn't really think about it because selfishly, you know, we all want him to go in wearing the Diamondbacks hat, but uh, there's no D back in the Hall of Fame. There's no Mariner in the Hall of Fame. That had to make the decision a little tougher to be the first to represent the franchise. And Junior's coming up, right? When's he coming up? Hey. Check on that. Yeah. yeah. He might be next year. I mean, he played for a long time in Cincinnati, too. You think Junior will make it? <laughs> you know, it, in a way, it's like Randy. You play a long time in two places. You have great moments in both places. It's not an easy call about the cap. And so much is made of it. I, I kind of like what uh, a lot of guys did and go in without a logo on the cap. There's only a few that have done it, but uh, that's one way to show respect to every organization that you were with. Yelich takes off the throw from Oscar is right there. And Yelich thrown out for only the second time all year. The rookie catcher Oscar Hernandez ends the top of the seventh. We stretch a chase. It's 5-2 Miami.
Back at Chase Field, a late challenge from Dan Jennings. He just did get it in under the wire. It's another replay review brought to us by Mix One as the Mar Marlins bench challenges the caught stealing call at second. Throw was there well oh, in yeah. time. This is one of those ones. And it did look like Yelich got his arm around the tag before CO could bring it up into his chest, but. God, the ball is there 10 feet ahead of the runner just waiting on him. That swim move we see a lot of the base dealers do now. So they finally did decide to put on the headsets after we were in commercial, so we're back live here. And we've got to start the bottom of the seventh inning as they look at this in New York. Don't lose in the shuffle. What a tremendous throw that was from Oscar Hernandez. And this is a guy that runs really well, Christian Yelich. He's oh, yeah. nine for 10 in stolen base opportunities this year. He was out by six feet. And that's Oscar Hernandez. We've heard about the throwing arm, and we finally got a chance to really see it. Here's the throw. Oh, strong throw, but he got rid of it quickly. And that's a tough pitch. That's inside to a right-handed hitter. Look at that. They, well, the ball beat him by a wide margin down there at second base. It's hard to see from that angle definitively exactly when Owings makes the tag on the chest of Christian Yelich. Well, we've had a little bit of everything here tonight. And still a ways to go. 5-2 with the seventh. I would think this one wouldn't take very long. Because, uh, you know, every angle we've seen, it's been very close. It looks like maybe he got his hand on the bag. Maybe CEO got the tag on the shirt. Yeah, but those are the ones that are tough to see when you do, don't have that clear and convincing evidence that you need. So if I don't have clear and convincing evidence and the second baseman is waiting at the base with the ball, I call him out. Bang. You're out. I mean, you're, you're taught not to move the glove, right? Because... The throw and the runner move quicker than you can move your glove hand. Yeah, and the, and the runner's got to get to the base. That's a common mistake a lot of infielders make. They want to go out and touch the runner. Well, he's coming to the bag. He's put the glove down in front of the bag, and he's got to slide into it. And he's out. Sure enough. Another replay review brought to you by Mitch One. The call stands, which means there is not enough clear and convincing evidence to overturn it or confirm it. And now we go to break. Stretch time to chase. Fernandez coming back out. He's going to find two lead back after this. He's thrown only 73 pitches in the ball game, 53 of them strikes. He's got 10 strikeouts. He's not walked a batter. And he'll work to Jake Lamb, Cliff Pennington, and Oscar Hernandez. Six, seven, and eight in the Arizona seventh. Diamondbacks down 5 2 after a, a busy night for the umpires. And I promised you, Bob Renley, and I have delivered news that would make you weep with joy. Oh, I can't wait. That was umpire related. 
Because I think that you are slowly apparently winning hearts and minds. And this uh, turned up on the old interweb uh, the other day. I, I I'm conflicted because I didn't want this, but I think you're right. Nice stop there by Prado. The San Rafael Pacifics. Have you ever heard of them? Well, those independent leagues up uh, in yeah, the California right. coast there. Yeah. The Pacific Association of Professional Baseball Clubs. It's an independent league in California. They are going to make history next week for the first time in baseball history. Two games will be played and balls and strikes will not be called by a human being. They are going to use pitch FX and have the beeper and the whole thing for balls and strikes. So you have won. Oh, I couldn't be happier. Now this is July 28th <laughs> and 29th. The Pacifics they've uh, partnered up with the Fremont Base Sports Vision Incorporated and the Pitch FX people and they're going to use it for two games. And the beauty of this is not only is it a great experiment and this is how the uh, the clock started. This the clock started in the Atlantic League in independent ball the between innings clock that we now use. So it, this stuff can get quickly implemented at the major league level. Now this is a lot more convoluted than just taking a clock up there obviously. But they're going to do these two games July 28 29th San Rafael Pacifics pitch FX will be the umpire and uh, Eric Burns former Diamondback great has worked closely with the Pat Tillman Foundation and Eric Burns who you see on the MLB network all the time has orchestrated this thing and he is going to oversee the, the computer I know it's a scary thought <laughs> we've replaced the umpires with robots yet we put Eric Burns in charge so I, I don't know if that's progress or not but to Eric's credit for every walk and strikeout in the two games with the robot umps, he will donate $100 to the Pat Tillman Foundation. Very nice. And if an umpire, or pardon me, if a manager or a player gets ejected arguing balls and strikes, Eric will donate $10,000 to the Pat Tillman Foundation. So congratulations, Eric Burns. A great job. Uh, I, I, we're all a little wary about putting him in charge. But he's done a tremendous job for the Pat Tillman organization. And this is going to be a very interesting case study. Pitch FX, which are the graphics you see on your screen right here. They're going to use that to call balls and strikes. And there may be some things to tweak moving forward. Uh, we've seen it happen with instant replay uh, each year. Some adjustments here and adjustments there until you get it exactly the way you want it. But uh, I'll tell you, once the uh, kinks are ironed out, I think people are going to look back at that as one of the most memorable days in Major League Baseball history. That one gets through Real Muto and Oscar reaches. Uh, and again, great job by Eric Burns. Congratulations, Eric. This is, all goes to a great uh, cause. PatTillmanFoundation.org is the website. And Eric had some great moments here for the Diamondbacks, of course. Looks much more comfortable in a baseball uniform than he does sliding around the set in a three piece suit. <laughs> And the Pacifics will donate a dollar for every ticket sold over the two games. They will auction off uh, some umpire jerseys. All the money goes to Pat Tillman Foundation. So a great job by Eric Burns. And it's going to be interesting to have an eye on that. Aaron Hill will hit for the pitcher. So I, I thought you would, boy, I, oh, I yeah. mean, I thought that would make your day. It does. It really does. Can we start tonight? <laughs> Too late. I mean, you know, and I, I have a lot of fun. Picking on the umpires and uh, some of it's in fun. <laughs> a little bit. But you know, it's technology. It's it's society moving forward. We have technology now. We can do things that we couldn't do in the past. And if you want to go to these games, they're at Albert Park in San Rafael, the San Rafael Pacifics of the Pacific Association, an independent league, and it's going to be July 28th and 29th. That's San Rafael's beautiful area. Even if there's no ball game, I would suggest you go out and hang out there a little while. Well, Rumi Max Venable lives in San Rafael. Oh, Will Venable's dead. Yeah. <laughs> two and two. First walk issued by Fernandez tonight. Two and two on Hill. Now here, let's take a look. This is a borderline call. You're either going to get the beep or not with pitch FX. You know, and like I said, they'll have to tweak it. Okay, how far off the corners? Because, you know, we talk all the time about a red seam catching the edge of the black. Will that be a strike? 
does the ball have to be over the white part of the plate you know and they'll have mm -hmm. to adjust the the effects until they get it exactly the way they want it. I mean umpires uh, in their grading system are given leeway. Uh, it's about a ball width off the inside and outside corner is considered to be an acceptable strike. So you know, they'll have to play with the, the dimensions a little bit and uh, figure out what exactly is and is not a strike. Which is clearly delineated in the rule book. Well, how about this? Fernandez, who hadn't walked a batter all night, has walked two, both with two outs. So he's uh, running on empty here, and Jennings is going to have to get his bullpen business. And after, speaking of umpires, after that last uh, call was ruled on, an updated look at our Mix One replay review standings. And here comes Jennings to go get his pitcher for him. Oh, that's Chuck Hernandez coming up, pardon me. Not ready to take Jose Fernandez out of the ball game yet. See if he can get through seven. And the bullpen is just now getting busy, so uh, this was a surprise. Certainly the way he was going along. Yeah. I mean that's what happens sometimes too. Your guys out there cruising, he's punched out ten batters, uh, seemingly on top of the game, gets two easy ground ball outs to second base to start this inning, and then back to back base on balls to roll around to the top of the order. Not many managers would have had a relief pitcher ready. Oh, two outs here in the seven. Diamondbacks are going to get the tying run to the play to tend to Rinciarte, who's 0 for 3. That's how quickly it can happen. I mean, coming into this inning, he'd only had three three ball counts in the entire game and then back to back walks. Bounces it to Morris, and it's off the shoulder and rolls up the line. Here comes Oscar. He's going to score. Aaron Hill will stop at third. And Enciarte is in at second. It's 5 3. A wicked hop off the shoulder of Mike Morris at first. Now the tying runs are in scoring position for Chris Owings. A two hopper looked like it might have hit near the edge of the grass right there. The infield grass had really came up on Morris, who in self defense just tried to barehand that ball, keep it in the infield. He deflects it into foul territory. Backs have it cooking here with two outs, taking advantage of those walks. A double and an RBI for Enciarte. He's at second, Hill at third. And here's Chris Owings, who's 0 for 3. You're a single away from tying up the ball game right here. And with the way this guy has pitched tonight, that would be headline news. Big at bat in the ball game for CO. Certainly assume they're going to go right after Chris Owens with Paul Goldschmidt in the on deck circle. Make sure you get a good pitch to hit right here, but be ready to hit. This is at 96. It's a ball and a strike. Chris, two hits in the series. 0 for 3 so far tonight. Golding on deck. This one was close. It's not real Muto trying to snatch that glove back in there. Boy, when he wants to take something off, he's really effective. Oh, man, late movement on that pitch. I mentioned it earlier, hasn't been throwing as many sliders this year, but we've seen a lot of really good ones in the game tonight. On and two. Muto can't hang on. How about that? Ten more pitches than he thrown in either of the previous two innings. 95 for the ball game, 65 strikes. Struck him out. 11 strikeouts for Fernandez, who strands two, but the Diamondbacks get one back to make it a 5 3 ball game. Ender and Ciarte, the RBI double, as we go to the eighth inning here at Chase.
Valley Honda dealers, where you'll get more standard features for less money. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Mix One, great taste, no face, available at local retailers. Well, it's turned out to be quite an eventful night here at Chase Field. Diamondbacks trail the Marlins 5-3 as we start the eighth inning. Just do it while the uh, Diamondbacks trying to. They almost had a chance to tie the ball game right there, but they made it a two-run Miami lead as we start the eighth. And now another Hernandez pitcher comes into the game. This is David Hernandez, his 13th appearance of the year. Still kind of trying to figure out where David Hernandez fits into that bullpen right now. Of course, it changes almost on a weekly basis depending on who's healthy, who's thrown a lot, who needs to go back down to the minors. Rolls are kind of fluid down there right now. Casey McGee, Aaron Hill in there for Owens. Spins and throws from the outfield grass. He was way out there in short right. So Aaron checks in for Owings on the double switch. He'll bat ninth. Pitcher spot now second. In the Diamondback order, let's take a look at our State Farm Farm Report of the ball game. Peter O'Brien, the Reno Aces last night against Albuquerque, a home run. He's got 16 homers this year and uh, put on a show in the All Star game. Part of that home run derby. Here's Mike Morse. Some folks don't miss a thing. Except the guy sitting behind him. Oh, and two. Well, I was kind of surprised to see a little bit of teal and orange in the ballpark tonight. There's a few Marlins fans here. I would imagine a, a lot of them are friends or families of the players, but uh, you see a few Marlins fans scattered around the ballpark. Well, at least we don't have that Marlin guy back there. Mar you know, Marlin's man who goes to oh, all the events yeah, and sits yeah, right yeah. by an old play in that bright orange shirt so we can get on TV. Mm -hmm. He'll turn up, you know, like at the Masters, the U.S. Open, Kentucky Derby, wearing that Marlin shirt. Mm -hmm. He's like a traffic cone out there sometimes. Hard to miss. Two and two. Mike Morse is another guy that the Marlins might move, but uh, somebody's going to have to pick up some money. He's got about $11 million left on his deal. Ouch. Yeah. And he does that a lot, too. First strikeout for David Hernandez. Well, fans, as promised, take a look at our Data Strong photo of the game brought to you by T Mobile. And the winner is, as selected by the Brendley Committee, James. This is a little leap of faith for me. I, uh, Luchador mask scare me a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of effort right there. Don't forget, fans, tweet us your strongest fan photo using the hashtag AZDataStrongFan. That's AZDataStrongFan. And your picture might pop up on our broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. There's the strike to JT Real Muto. Still a little shaken up by that photo. <laughs> Me too. I mean, that, it's like I saw that one in a post office. I think it was the lighting. This is sort of it ominous. Been, yeah. It looked like a, a true detective episode or something. Yeah, I told the story earlier about taking the Greyhound bus from Jackson, Mississippi to Shreveport. I think that guy was on my bus. <laughs> <laughs> and Romuto offers it that one. They complete the strikeout. Two strikeouts in the inning for David Hernandez. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Diamondbacks down two.
at the ballpark tonight. And Jose Fernandez, unfortunately, not a lot of fun for the Arizona Diamondbacks to face. No, not at all. Total control, although he had some trouble early on. But when it came down to it, he was able to get outs, and he got a bunch of strikeouts to keep control of the game. So we'll take a look at his performance, as well as get an update on the health of David Peralta for sure. We'll have a reaction to this one, guys, right after the game. Eddie Johnson. Eddie, I know you're having fun out here at the ballpark tonight. And Jose Fernandez, unfortunately, not a lot of fun for the Arizona Diamondbacks to face. No, not at all. Total control, although he had some trouble early on. But when it came down to it, he was able to get outs, and he got a bunch of strikeouts to keep control of the game. So we'll take a look at his performance, as well as get an update on the health of David Peralta for sure. We'll have a reaction to this one, guys, right after the game. Thanks, guys. Look forward to that. Some changes for the Marlins here as we start at the bottom of the eighth inning. New pitcher on in relief of Jose Fernandez. It's the right-hander Sam Dyson. His 42nd appearance of the year and ERA just under three and a half. You see Martin Prado there checking in from now third base as Prado moves from second to third. And started first here. Mike Morse out of the game. Casey McGee moves from third to first, replacing Morse. Miguel Rojas, the former Dodger, now at second, taking over for Prado with Prado at third. So Goldie leads it off. Diamondbacks down 5-3. And you've got Fernandez out of there finally. And still a very winnable ball game here for the D-backs. Goldie a single and a double. He has scored a run. He's two for three. You know the theory with the getting back to the robot ump thing. The theory that Eric Burns has put out there and uh, Eric doing all this work for the Pat Tillman Foundation is that there will still be an umpire. Back there you'll umpire home plate just like you would a base. He's just not calling the balls and strikes and the example that you would use we've seen now. When you've got batters getting hit somebody has to. Police the situation at the plate like you would have to do at any other base. So if you add the umpire. Or the robot umpires you're actually. Adding a job, you're not taking a job away from an umpire because then you would need a fifth umpire to work the, the pitch FX stuff. Yeah. You need an umpire there, you know, like you said, hit by pitch or foul tips. Swing and miss at a third strike. Did the ball hit in the dirt or did the catcher catch it clean? Be some calls for the home plate umpire, just not balls and strikes. Well, he missed up and in to Goldie. Well, make a note of that one. Tie run is at the plate. Nobody out. It's A.J. Pollock. He took over for David Peralta after Peralta was hit in the head by a Jose Fernandez fastball. A.J. at 302 and 11 homers. He had a pair of singles last night. AJ's got two singles and two walks in the series. He's hitting over 340 in July. Missed upstairs, and it's a ball and a strike. This was David Peralta in the sixth inning. 
appeared to get him right on the ear flap of the helmet. And he was down for a while, walked off okay. We still don't have any word on his condition as they run through some tests, of course. Diamondbacks counter Dominic Leone. Plunk Christian Yelich with a pitch right in the hip, and he was immediately ejected. Turner Ward has also been ejected from the Diamondback dugout. So you hope that's the end of it. But after that pitch to goalie, you have to keep a close eye on things. Well, it seemed like an odd time to throw at somebody. Uh, Marlins have a two run lead in the ball game. If you do hit Goldie intentionally, it brings a tying run to the plate. Generally, if you're paying back, Unless you really want to send a message, you wait until you can afford to hit somebody. Two outs, nobody on. Base hit. Down the left field line. Now it's over to cut it off. Goldie is in third. And it's a double for Pollock. The tying runs are in scoring position with nobody out. And the way that Jose Fernandez pitched here tonight, if you can come back and steal this one, that's a big W. Sinker, maybe even off the plate inside, and AJ just rips it down that third baseline. Christian Yelich with a gold glove to his credit already, but he threw to the wrong base right here. Goldie turning the corner at second, puts his head down. He's going to easily make it into third base, and because the throw went into third, AJ was able to advance on to second base. Second and third, nobody out for Yasmani Tomas. An RBI single. He scored a run in the fourth. He's one for three. I was just going to say, this situation, you give him anything on the outer half of the plate, he's only going to knock it the other way and tie the ball game. So you have got to come in right here. If he takes that ball, it hits him. But because he swung at it, it cleared that front shoulder out of the way just enough as that ball whistled by, and then his back shoulder came through. Goldie a third, Pollock at second, AJ the tying run. AJ moves up the run of corners now with one out. Hoping Martin might hit Goldie in the back with this throw. You see, Goldie immediately gets himself into fair territory as he was coming down that third baseline, intentionally trying to get in line with the throw, but the ball was just hit too hard. And Prado's throw gets around Goldie and two real Muto in plenty of time. Well, you got the left hander Jake Lamb coming up, and Jennings going to make a move right here. We'll keep it here at the ballpark as we continue to celebrate Randy Johnson's Hall of Fame induction Sunday. Another edition of the road to Cooperstown. 4,875 strikeouts for the big unit. We hear from the first victim and the last. Well, my greatest memory of that day in 1988 when Randy Johnson had his first start in the major leagues in Montreal was uh, I was with the Pirates, and the guy hidden ahead of me was veteran right-handed hitter Glenn Wilson, and he took him deep right before me. And sure enough, you know, Randy came with an attitude the day he got to the big leagues and seemed like he dialed it up a little bit from 98 to about a buck 25, and I don't remember seeing any of those pitches. I just swung hard at some fastballs, one, two, three, and they sounded like strikes, and, and I moved on. For me, it's a privilege to be in that in that list. You know, um, you know, it's uh, it's something that you, like I said, I can always say. Uh, you know, I I, I I struck out against the the best, and uh, you know, I went out there, I took my hacks. Uh, you know, he did what he, what he did against a lot of well, most other players he faced. He struck him out. So, like I said, one of the best pitchers of all time, probably one of the top top two, top three lefties of all time. So, uh, you know, just a privilege and an honor for me to be able to be at the plate and, and face him. Proud to be a part of it. Uh, heck, he wouldn't have the other 4,874 strikeouts without me. And I always kid him about that. For me, you know, just uh, just a great opportunity to be able to tell stories uh, later in my life about him.
Congratulations, Randy. The road to Cooperstown. Randy Johnson's big weekend coming up. Big moment of the ball game right here for the Diamondbacks who ran into an out at home plate. And second and third, nobody out. Contact play on. Goldie took off from third, thrown out by Prado. So now with runners in the corners and one out to face Jake Lamb. It's the lefty Mike Dunn who had 19 inherited runners in the first half of the season. He stranded 18 of them. And he inherits two right here. A.J. Pollock is the runner at third. As Monty Tomas, the tying run at first, one out, and in steps Jake Lamb, who had an RBI triple in the fourth. He's one for three. Down 0 and 2. As we invite you to play Kachinko by signing up at one of the 20 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. One and two. Been 33 games now since Jake came back from that foot injury. Since he's come off the DL, he's hit 237 with six extra base hits, including that triple tonight. And he looks at strike three. Two down. And so the switch hitting Cliff Pennington comes up. Shortstop. Done a hard throw in his own right. That fastball consistently in the mid to upper 90s. Short late breaking slider to go along with it. And now Pennington, who's a switch hitter, just over 240 from the left hand side this season, but he's had only 12 plate appearances all year as a right hand hitter. And he's in there against the lefty Dunn. They're on the corners, two outs. Watch the bunt. So Penny just take a little peek down toward Martin Prado at third base. Uh, you wouldn't expect a bunt with two outs and a runner at third. But if Martin's going to play that deep on the left side of the infield, Penny's a really good bunter. Joe's bunt pulls back and it's ball one. Now that may change everything because now Prado has got to at least respect the fact that Pennington might bunt for a base hit until he gets to two strikes. But he's backing right up in that deep position once again. Well, it's right there if Penny can get it down. But see if Prado comes charging in as Dunn delivers the ball to home plate. He's way back there. Creeping in a bit and he stays put. Ooh. There's strike two. Three for his last seven with runners in scoring position has driven in four with those three hits. That cliff over his last 22 games hitting 405. Down a ball and two strikes. Yank that one. Great job by Real Muto to get a piece of it at least. Way out there. Real Muto's expecting that ball inside. That's over in the left handed batter's box. We talk about catcher's range all the time. It doesn't show up like a center fielder or a shortstop, but Real Muto showed he had some quickness and some range back there on that pitch. It's full three and two. 
Oscar Hernandez would be next. He's on deck. That's a big pitch right here. Tomas can now take off from first on the pitch. So anything down the line or in the gap has a chance to tie the ball game. Guillo play behind the runner at first. Here it is. There goes Tomas. And it's ball four. The bases are loaded. And here comes the rookie catcher. Oh, Oscar Hernandez was not even in the original starting lineup. He had to be added in after Wellington Castillo was a late scratch with tightness in his left hamstring. And now with just his second major league start, Oscar Hernandez will step in for the biggest at bat of the ball game so far. And we'll stay right here as the Marlins bring in a new pitcher. We continue to celebrate Randy Johnson's Hall of Fame induction. Four days from today, the road to Cooperstown. Let's go up to Cooperstown, New York now and take a look behind the scenes at the Baseball Hall of Fame. Randy's going to walk into an environment here over the course of the weekend that probably will exceed even his wildest baseball dreams. 60 Hall of Fame members will return. He'll have the opportunity to spend time with legends like Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Sandy Koufax, players, teammates, those that he competed against that are now in the Hall of Fame. He will have a very balanced schedule, one that's focused on the family side of this event so that he can be with those who have supported him through the journey. The public side, the Hall of Fame weekend events that we do that allow fans to celebrate him and his induction. And then finally, some of the ceremonial side, looking at the plaque, photos with the plaque, having the plaque here on the wall in Cooperstown, and sharing some of his memories with fans. So it does move very fast when he arrives here in Cooperstown. Before he knows it, Sunday afternoon will have come and gone, but then it's an opportunity to revel in the fact that he's a part of this exclusive fraternity. With the class of 2015, this will be their final resting place here at the Black Gallery. Craig Vigio, Pedro Martinez, John Smoltz, and then finally back here, Randy Johnson, since the plaques are arranged alphabetically. So Randy will be here at a lower level for our smaller visitors to see his plaque. Well, the culmination of a great Hall of Fame career, Randy Johnson, Oscar Hernandez just starting his career. This is just his second start in the big leagues. The 22-year-old rookie catcher will bat down two, two outs with the bases loaded. In the bottom of the eighth inning, A.J. Pollock is at third. Yasmani Tomas, the tying run at second. And Cliff Pennington, after that key two-out walk, the go-ahead run at first. And the new pitcher for the Marlins, their third in this inning, is the right-hander, Brian Morris. Well, it's hitting 3-0-3 against Brian Morris this year in his 34 appearances leading up to tonight. This lead one right here. One clean base hit. Oscar struck out twice against Fernandez, then walked and scored a run in the seventh. Bases loaded, two outs. Morris bounces that one. Real Muto keeps it in front, and it's one and zero. Oh. Keep in mind, Diamondbacks down two, had second and third in this inning with no outs. And they still have not been able to get a run across here. And it's up to the rookie catcher. High strike call. One and one. The reaction from Chip. That high strike always gets a reaction from the crowd just because you're not used to seeing a lot of pitches up there above the belt called a strike, but it looked like that one nipped the top of the zone. One and one.
your chance you're going to see some kind of a breaking ball right here. See bounce it in the dirt to the backstop. Pollock at third. This is down and away, and it's even two and two. And Jennings has used up most of his bench, and he's on his third pitcher in this inning. Struck him out. The Diamondbacks had second and third, no outs. Bases loaded, two outs, and they cannot get a run across. It's still 5 3. The Cox Gig Live High Speed Highlights. Gila River Game Summer. Ninth inning we go. Six hits apiece. 5 3. Marlins lead it. Diamondbacks had a great opportunity there in that eighth inning, but just couldn't get the runs across. So it's still a two run deficit as we start the ninth with Cole Gillespie against David Hernandez. Jose Fernandez put on a show here for the Marlins. 11 strikeouts. Keep in mind with the addition of Zach Godley, who's now going to start tomorrow in his major league debut up from Double A Mobile. Uh, if he's going to pitch, he has to be added to the 40 man roster. And that means somebody has to go. Um, I assume that Wellington Castillo was not healthy enough to hit for Oscar Hernandez. That was one option there. But to the roster depth is a little murky right now because you've got that roster spot sort of hanging over things. Goldie and foul ground. Well, it seemed like Chip Hale's options were pretty limited with an injured catcher and a, a possible roster move, a definite roster move coming up. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me to see a, a pitcher perhaps putting on his hitting shoes. Uh, Shortstop, Adani Maria. Pitcher spot will be up third in the bottom half of the ninth inning for the Diamondbacks, and somebody's going to have to take that at bat. You know, one way you can kind of massage that 40 man roster is if you have a guy that's sitting on the 15 day disabled list uh, and his injury is serious enough that it's going to be longer than the 15 days and you need a roster spot, you can put him on the 60. Well, right now, that guy might be Jared Saltalamaki. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, he's got out with that neck injury. But uh, they do have to move somebody off the 40 man to make room for Godley, who starts tomorrow night. Injured pitchers down there. Archie Bradley with a shoulder. Chase Anderson with some triceps. 
Two and one on Echeverria. He doubled his last time up, one for three. After that foul ball, let's take a look at our Chaz Roberts air conditioning. Cool play of the game. Oscar Hernandez. That's just kind of a no look pickoff attempt at first base. <laughs> I've seen guys do that before. I had a catching instructor that tried to get me to do it. I just wasn't that brave. You know, the idea is you square up to the pitcher. You maybe even turn your head a little bit toward the third base side of the field and then look out of the corner of your eye. And Goldie was on the bag. And Oscar didn't uh, snap a throw down there. He just kind of flipped it down there, hoping to fool Yelich into believing he was just going to toss the ball back to the pitcher. There's a lot to like about that young man back there. Echeverria, Pennington, two down. A fan Saturday and MLB doubleheader starts with the Giants and the A's of Bay Area battle. Then at four Pacific, it's the Braves and the Cardinals, a game you can see only on Fox Sports 1. Coverage begins at 1 o'clock Pacific time, only on Fox Sports 1, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Giants behind Matt Kane, one in San Diego today, 7 1. Dodgers winners in Atlanta, 3 1. So both teams ahead of the Diamondbacks in the NL West. Winners tonight. Here's Miguel Rojas. AJ Ramos, the closer. The guy that's. Uh, uh, they'll tell you a little better than Carter Capps, which uh, has been hard to believe. You wonder, well, why isn't Carter Capps closing? And we asked Tommy Hutton that. Isn't this guy Rollo has been really good. So he'll get the ninth. Got the save last night, his 15th of the year. That's well hit, and it rolls into left center. And it's going to roll all the way to the warning track. In fact, it's Yarte way over to cut it off. Has a two out double. Really thread the needle that time. Mike Harkey. Rojas went down to get that one. Mashed it into that gap in left center. Good hustle play by Ender Inciarte to get to that ball as quickly as he possibly could. Strong throw back to the cutoff. Man, that's all that held Rojas at second base right there. So the Rojas in second and two down. The batter will be Ichiro. Here at to get this thing going. Ichiro had an RBI triple and he scored a run in the fifth. He's one for four. And two for 12 in the series. That shot of the press box earlier in the ball game. The Japanese uh, media contingent still follows every move Ichiro makes. Even after 15 years in the big leagues, he is uh, headline news all the time in Japan. There they are. Now that's a that's a big group for one guy. And, and there's a, a an equally large group of photographers that documents every move he makes from the time he steps out of the dugout in the afternoon for batting practice until the final out of the ball game. I mean, it's just a total rock star thing. And it hasn't worn off ever since he came into the big leagues 15 years ago. Oh. 
There's a strike. You know, and much like Derek Jeter in his illustrious career, nary a bad word about Ichiro. Yeah. He's been a model citizen, obviously an outstanding player and teammate, never involved in any kind of controversy on or off the field. He is, by all accounts, a very fun guy to be a teammate with. A great sense of humor. Still does the thing where he really doesn't speak English, but that's everybody's kind of on to that uh, now. But somehow he still gets away with it. There's a translator that goes everywhere. Fernando Valenzuela. When it's convenient, he doesn't speak English, but he's married to an English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> two and two. How about Fernandez? I mean, some guys might be in the clubhouse now. He's right on the railing. Top step it says a lot about the kid. So the triple in the fifth make it 102 hits away from 3,000. Neither. Five stolen bases shy Sorry, of 500. Partner. You're up. I was going to say there was a time earlier in his career where that was reachable in the second half of the season. He's yeah. getting 250, 260 hits a year. I mean, it's going to be hard to top 2004. He had 262 hits. And there you see the numbers from the Oryx Blue Wave of Japan specifically. Began playing with them when he was 18 years old. That was 1992. Right back to the mound. Quick glove hand by Hernandez. He's got it on the fly and he strands the two out double. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. Diamondbacks trail at 5 3. Here Saturday, pick up the Randy Johnson Hall of Fame bobblehead. Then on Saturday, August 8th, join us pregame the retirement of Randy's number 51. All fans with us that day will get this commemorative t shirt courtesy of Fry's Food Stores. Get your tickets right now at dbacks.com. Ninth inning at Chase Field, down 5 3. The man who had the save last night for the Marlins is 15 for the year. It's the right hander, A.J. Ramos. Aaron Hill will lead it off. Fifteen of nineteen in his save opportunities. A very good one-five-one one ERA in just over forty-one innings. Just about a fifty-fifty split between his fastball and his two off-speed pitches, the slider and the straight changeup. Aaron walked his first time up, came into the ball game midway through. He's at 220 on the year with four homers. And 
Now that's Wellington Castillo. He's got a bat in his hand and a helmet. A late scratch from the ball game with hamstring tightness. But it looks like he might get an at bat here coming up. Pitcher spot is due up third in this inning, second in the diamond back order after the double switch. And then you have Goldie after that. You can already see Goldie behind Castillo doing his visualization thing. 2 0 to Hill. There's a strike, 2 0. Find a way to get Goldie up there in this inning. That would mean he would represent the, at least the tying run. There he is. Oh, just like that. Misses with a breaking ball, and Aaron's ahead three and one. Need some base runners. And Ciarte will be next. Pitcher spot after that. We assume it's Castillo, and then Goldie behind him. Three and two. Almost blew a save Sunday in Philly. We've shown you that earlier in the series. Served up a walk-off homer to Jeffrey and Coor at Citizens Bank Park. As the Phillies swept the Marlins last weekend. They got the save in the ball game last night, his 15th of the year. And it is hard to believe after watching Carter Caps last night that he's not the closer. And as Tommy Hutton pointed out when he was here with us in his inning. If Caps was the closer, the the stink or the outrage over the whole thing would be even more than what it already is. I mean, imagine if he was racking up save after save with that routine. Then people would really be upset. Three and two to Hill. Ball four. Lead off man's aboard. Time run at the plate with nobody out. And Castillo is indeed going into the on deck circle. He will hit for the pitcher following Enciarte. Well, what do we say about leadoff walks? They generally come back to bite you. Let's see. Ender an RBI double his last time up. He's one for four. Goes bunt, takes ball one. Prado will come creeping in from third. Keep an eye on Martin down there. He's got a foot or two on the grass after Ender showed bunt on that first pitch. Swings it in and belts it over the head of Hill and into right. And the time runs to the board with nobody out. Well, Aaron Hill had to duck and cover that time. That was right at him. Yes, he did. Boy, how many times did we see Ender do this in the first half? Show bunt on the first pitch, draw those corner infielders in a little bit. Of course, Casey McGee is holding on Aaron Hill at first base anyway. And then just blister that next pitch right by those corner infielders. Look out, Aaron. So after the double switch earlier in the ball game, the pitcher spot is right here. Chuck Hernandez, the pitching coach, out to talk to his closer in Wellington Castillo will take the attack. And again, Wellington was in the original starting lineup. He was taking early hitting all day today with Turner Ward. But it had to be scratched very uh, late in the afternoon. They said tightness in his left hamstring. So Oscar Hernandez was moved into the lineup. But Castillo feeling well enough to at least pinch hit right here with Goldie on deck. Welly in there at 236 for the year with seven homers. 0 for 7 in the series so far with four strikeouts. Aaron Hill is the runner at second. Ender and Ciarte, the tying run at first. Nobody out. McGee creeps in from first base. Prado from third. There, strike one. Jeremy Hellickson, who's uh, looked hitterish at times. Probably going to pinch run for Welly if he happens to get on right here. 
What do you think about the idea of a bunt right here? Well, no, because then you take the bat right out of Goldie's hands. Even though he would represent the potential winning run in the game, I don't think there's any doubt Dan Jennings is not going to let Goldie beat him. Corners are creeping in for the Marlins. Both infielders on the grass. Castillo swings away, and he's down 0-2. Well, he has really been a free swinger up there as of late. He struck out 10 times in his last 17 at bats. And that was the reason, we assume, for all the early hitting work today with Turner Ward. Aaron Hill, the runner at second, Enciarte the tying runner at first. No outs, 0 and 2 on Wellington Castillo. I think if you were going to think about putting down a sack bunt, uh, you probably would have used one of your starting pitchers instead of Wellington Castillo. Save him. Just in case you have another at bat uh, later in the inning and you need a fly ball in the outfield or something like that. But uh, no sign of a bunt. It's like away the entire at bat. Well, you've got Pollock and Tomas do up after Goldie. One and two. Neil Muto's done a real nice job back there tonight. He's been lucky on a few of his blocks, but as I said, there's no such thing as a bad block. Even if it happens to hit the umpire and stay right there, that's a good block. He's backhanded a few balls. He probably should have dropped to his knees to block, but nothing's gotten by. A ball and two strikes. Yeah, he is not uh, moving well at all down there. Base is loaded. Nobody out for Goldie. And here comes Hellickson to run for Castillo. A big two-strike hit right there for Welly. Really excited about this base hit. A hanging slider up in the zone. And Wellington Castillo just bangs it through that left side. Unfortunately, hit it so hard. Aaron Hill didn't have a chance to score from second, but... Well, this is a little concerning right here. I mean, he could barely drag himself down there to first base. Your only other catchers are a guy on the DL and a guy who tonight started his second career game. So the catching position, an area of concern. But right now, the attention is at home plate. Paul Goldsmith, the National League's leading hitter, is up there down two with the bases loaded and nobody out. Aaron Hill is at third. In Ciarte, the tying run at second. Hellickson is the winning run at first. Nobody out. Here's Goldie. Strike one. Well, besides a victory, you know what a home run would do right here? Tacos, a Jumbo Jack, and Papa John's. The fast food trifecta. Come on, Goldie. That's always the bottom line for you. <laughs> Big RBI spot. No major league player has more RBIs than Goldie. Way outside, and it's one and one. Jose Fernandez brilliant tonight, 11 strikeouts. But that W in danger right here. Oof. Change up that time from Ramos. Really pulled the string, got Goldie way out in front. Looked like a fastball middle end. Good pitch to lift out of the ballpark, just got out in front. Dropped it in there on him. Called strike three. Center fielder, AJ Pollock. Similar to the first strike on Goldie, just a get me over slider right in the heart of the plate. Well, here's A.J. Pollock who came in for Peralta when Peralta was hit in the head by a Jose Fernandez fastball. He doubled in his only previous at bat. 
And remember, AJ had that big pinch hit home run in game two of that four game series in Miami when the Diamondbacks swept four at Marlins Park back in May. So he's come through in a clutch against these guys before. Hill and Ciarte Hellickson running for Castillo, third to first. He bounced one in front of home plate. AJ swung and missed, and he's down 0 2. Apparently, a real good changeup from Ramos. He's gotten a couple of pretty good hitters to chase really bad changeups here in this inning. That one out in front of home plate, a good couple of feet. Well, there is a reason this guy is closing instead of Carter Caps. Oh, and two on Pollock. Tomas on deck. Just does get a piece. Backs in the previous inning, down two, had second and third, nobody out, had bases loaded, two outs, could not get a run across. And now another big threat here in the ninth. Two. Got him. Two down. An assortment of change ups and sliders. Well, it's up to Yasmani Tomas. Tomas, an RBI single. He scored a run in the fourth. He's one for four. Base is loaded, two down. Ball one. A hanging nothing ball right yeah. there. Front door slider. One and one. Yes, he went. Brian Knight says strike two. is loaded nobody out and Ramos strikes out Goldschmidt Pollock and Tomas to close out a 5-3 Marlins victories and a Miami series win Ramos did not throw a fastball to the last two hitters he faced in this ball game all change ups and sliders our Arizona Federal Credit Union power player of the game the Marlins starter Jose Fernandez his fourth start coming off Tommy John surgery and he was electric. He had 11 strikeouts. Pretty good looking young pitcher. If this guy stays healthy, uh, it's unfathomable what kind of uh, levels he might reach in this game, especially if you put a good team behind him. Diamondbacks in the ball game tonight were 0 for 4 with the bases loaded. All four outs were strikeouts. They had second and third. 
Nobody out. Bases loaded. Two outs in the eighth. Couldn't get a run across. Bases loaded. Nobody out in the ninth inning. And they still cannot score. So it's a 5-3 Marlins win here. And they take the series. Diamond back live post game show is on the air. Let's go out to Jody Jackson. Jody. Thanks a lot, Steve. Jody Jackson alongside our guest analyst this week, former Sun, Sun's broadcaster, Eddie Johnson. Eddie.